ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Caldera Mondays. Uh, my name is Becca, I play Elspeth the Bard slash Cleric, uh, and I will let the others introduce themselves from top down this week. Oh, Alex, you are super quiet. No, you are still super, super quiet. Let's go from Amy while Alex fixes his mic. Hello. I'm Dima and I'm playing Marco, the Hoover. Um, hello, I'm Azuzu. I'm playing Copy Arcane. Hello, I'm Scott. I'm the Dungeon Master for Delta M Group Mondays. Uh, Sam, I'm playing Toto Half Pint, the Half Lean Ranger. I'm Traz. I'm playing Cloud, the Tabaxi Rogue Warlock. And then we will see if Alex has fixed his mic. And I believe Alex is doing our recap this week. So, last week was nice and event eventful. With um, basically the story following on from where Fisker had left off in the previous game, um, which just so happened to be being captured by the Gifyanki and taken aboard the ship. Where, when he regained consciousness, well, whilst he submitted to being taken away and um, locked up with other prisoners, he tried to gather the prisoners and, you know, do what you would normally do, try to break out upon getting out um, and learning some things. He tried to bargain with the dragon that seemed to be in charge. To try and get everyone back home safely in exchange for some books. Visca has no idea what books the dragon's looking for, so he's lying through his teeth. But if it can save everyone, he's willing to try it. Uh, whilst the rest of the party split up to do some shopping and other things with Cloud and Elspeth going to Cloud's orphanage where he grew up um, then Toto Maka and Copy going shopping only for them to try and help the proprietor of Gilmore's glorious goods only for them to fail and possibly kill him then the instant he died decide to rob the place um, after that, they end up going back to meet, um, I forget the lady's name, the noble we had met previously. Miranda. Miranda, thank you. Um, talking to her, um, discussing what they did with the ships and the uses they could possibly get out of them. After that, they followed him. They went back to the temple to find out what had happened to Visca. Um, only to ask about what the beings who were that attacked. To be taken aside by um, one of the higher up scribes and led to um, a, her home where she revealed to be where she then took her lump down into a secret room of sorts, I guess, to reveal herself to be a mind flare working behind the scenes. I believe that's everything. 
yeah, I think so. So whenever we are ready to begin. One little tidbit just to add to the end of that is that what in discussing what reserve mentioning that books in which several apparently the main flare had taken a hold of and then just brandished on its sort of thick summary of a desk and just planted in front of the present party members and that's where we left off. So you're all sitting in this thing's private little study underground somewhere in West Run. Weird of Lovecraftian IKEA based wackiness of furniture that's interestingly looking well she's all sitting there kind of like beaten and broken for the last few days or the last like two days worth of just cluster fucks going on in the West Run. Or do you wish to proceed? Um, as I recall, I think some of us were stunned, no? No, you're that all unstunned. We gave you the, the potion-y thing to unstun right. you. Those of us who weren't stupid enough to take a drink from a stranger. I like to try and teach very basic sort of like uh, lessons in my games and think is don't accept things from a stranger. It's quite a common one. In Dungeons and Dragons, it happens all the time and people just go, oh, random person in a hoodie, brandishing potions. You can't possibly be bad. Uh, it worked out. It's fine. Only because one of your party doesn't freaking drink. <laughs> exactly. We've got Elizabeth to take care of us and Maka to back her up. If Elizabeth can't talk her way out, Maka can blow her way out. Yeah, two thirds of the mean girls helping us out is quite helpful. Anyway, how do you wish to proceed? You're just watching this six tentacled mind flare just sitting cross armed. Well, the arms kind of tucked underneath the tentacles, just leaving the desk with a pile of books in front of her. Uh, Cloud will get up and go and have a look at the books, if she allows it. Well, he starts to walk up and gestures to the books. Um, just a quick out of character question. Um, what was the deal she put in front of us? Uh, she she wanted us to do something, right? The mind. Best thing a uh, possible uh effort to kind of go and. Eliminate this splinter group of Gith Yankee that attacked Western because of reasons that you're not quite sure why, other than they attacked the place. Why she would specifically go, hey, hey, I can get you, I can give you a hand taking them out if you want, in exchange for something that she's not mentioned. Benefit, more or less. But as Cloud starts to approach, you just see her hand just kind of slowly move forward and place on top of the pile. I'm just curious, my dear. Just wanted to have a look at what maybe what this is all about. Also, this voice of hers just like reappears in your head. Just like, see with your eyes, not with your hands. Um, whilst you're lying on the floor, um, because I'm just kind of giving up on the day, I'm just going to kind of talk out saying, so what's stopping us from killing you and just taking the things? I mean, if there's six of us and one of you. There's a few moments of awkward silence as our eyes just slowly move from one side of the room just to focus on you with that comment. I'm on the floor, so she can focus on the floor. Death's there just like, bitch please. I mean, you can stare all you want, but the cat over there can disappear and reappear, taking its throat to pieces. 
the elf girl does something, the other elf girl blows stuff up. And the little one over there can shoot things. Did you just refer to me as elf girl? Yeah, that one. She can. She does. Fuck off! I am probably like six times your age. See, feisty. I'm just gonna kick coffee. Well, and that's it. You're not close to being assholes, as you common people would say. You're certainly assholes. Please don't kick me. I've got four HP. Cloud saw uh, that comment from the um, uh, mind flare just points at copy and just goes, uh, "That one a bit more than the rest." Uh, certainly. At which point the both uh, the other hand is kind of moves to more almost like a face palm like expression as it's kind of juggling the tentacles and about in its hand for a sec out of frustration then puts the hand up through over its smooth head. And the tentacles just fall back down. So, what exactly do we get out of this end of the bargain? Oh, to have to deal with Gith Yankee showing up on your doorstep and fucking everything you... Timothy. No. no, but we have to go chasing them, so it's not like we get out of dealing with them. We'd be dealing with them either way. This way you make sure you deal with the best once and for all. And but what? they're obviously pick messing with your business plan or whatever you're up to. It gives you a coy look as you say that going. It would benefit both parties, yes. I I still don't understand how it would benefit us. We're going to be facing them either way. Why do we not just wait for them to turn up here? Why do we have to go chasing them? What do we get out of going to chase them on ending up on their territory and not on ours? Catch them by surprise. Or they will make a more the 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 term destroy and capture in which this attack was too brief. Expect greater resistance. Um, I'll I'll kind of sit up at this point, but we were leaving the city. We had nothing to do with. It. They weren't attacking us. The city is fine. Out of game. Do we know that Visca has been kidnapped? Uh, yes, I believe. If I remember correctly, Elspeth was told when she asked about him. They, she That's was told the last they saw was him being taken into a ship. That's correct. Maybe we should talk about this privately for a minute. Inflow rolls its eyes back and it kind of snaps its fingers and a little kind of area behind it kind of opens up like a like an it's a Serpentine, I can imagine that there's a vertical and this uh, horizontal bits open up because I'll give you a few moments. Got the pile of books. He walks through it. Is there any chance I could have seen the, um, at least seen the seams of the books? If I like catch the names or the. Um... Make a perception check, please. See if you can kind of catch a glance. Nice. One of the books that you catch a very has got what this kind of gold embossing on it that says it's the uh, Warner Kynan's Guide to Planar uh, to the Planar Cosmos Balance and the cosmology was within. And you're not you're not quite sure what the mumble jumble sign is. You just read it and kind of went mm, something to do with the cosmology and planes, whatever that what all that crazy nonsense means. Below that, though slightly withered, is History of Taldore, Volumes of Various Numbers, and the final book you didn't quite get a look at. Uh, 
left the room, the membrane kind of door shuts over. You have a few moments to yourselves. So what are we all right. thinking? Even excusing my behavior, we that this is too fishy. This is too suspicious. We have no issues with the gift Yankee. Well, they attacked the city, they burned all the shit down. You know, they potentially have a member of our party. They killed me. They killed they killed Cloud straight they up. They to kill the rest of us. However, I don't see what we gain by chasing them. I mean, she's I mean, she she's a fishy motherfucker, but she's got a good point. I mean, element of surprise. We can I mean, Cloud's real sneaky. I mean, I can be sneaky when I need to be. Um, I Elizabeth is sneaky. True, however, they I... are on a flying ship. It is hard to be sneaky when you're flying in the air to try and catch up with the flying ship. But what do we get from going after them? Yes, maybe one of our party members is with them, but... That person sacrificed himself for not by not being with us. They have deserved the death they have sealed themselves in. I'm starting to believe you have lost your right to talk. Look, I am for, just for that. I am firmly on the side of going. I want to go. I want to go, and I want to take Elizabeth with us, and I want to fucking throw her off the ship. Well, Elbeth and Toto have a good point, little changeling. Going into a battle where we will most likely lose is pointless. Then don't come. I agreed with you up until the point you started saying that the person that left or ended up running away from the group to try and protect whatever he was trying to protect deserved to die, and then you lost all no, sense not, of... No, not deserved no, to no, die. No, no, enough. Not enough, enough to I do die. not want to hear from you They're anymore. They're dying enough. to protect what, what they think is right. For us to interfere in what's stopping them is interfering in what they choose to be right for them. We are telling them what's right for them without actually knowing what's right for them. So you're basically telling me you think he ran to com basically die. I'm pretty sure you're no, stupid. No, I'm saying he ran to protect what he wanted to protect. And if he dies in the process, that's his right to die. However, what happens if he isn't dead right now? Then we are jumping into the mouth of a beast we have no knowledge of. We, have, we do not have the skills to kill them. And we we've just, killed loads we of ourselves are going We kill we killed plenty today. We'll kill plenty tomorrow. We'll do it you again. Where's your sense of adventure? I have a sense of adventure, but my sense of adventure isn't walking into death. He died. I'm gonna point at Cloud. I almost died. Yeah, but we picked up some shit that's going to help with that. So, there's that. We've got, we're more buffed up than we This is a fool's errand, and all of you know this. Just to agree to go with despite me is not a good reason to do It's not to spite you. You do not have to come. You can, you know where the road is, and you can take it wherever you like. I think to consider if you're considering our main concern in this decision is you, that is very egotistical and completely untrue. I mean, it swayed my decision, but it wasn't the sole the sole reason. I agree that I don't understand why we would chase them when we could wait here to. She's so convinced that they will return. We can wait here for when they return, but I still think we should take on the fight, be it on our on our grounds or theirs. If we wait here, how many more people are going to, you know, get hurt in the process? There's a whole city's worth of people here that would, mm. we would then be putting... We you at least, say yeah, that, but we before they that. attacked, we were leaving the... And we then were they leaving attacked. the city that we're now choosing to protect. 
while they attack, you're leaving the city that you now choose to protect. What benefit do we get from protecting it? We have no alliance to this city. I don't believe we were leaving the city. We were following Cloud to where he was going. And I don't believe he was. Were you leaving the city, Cloud? Well, you know where I was heading. To make sure mm -hmm. that the people I wanted safe. And as you saw, they were extremely. But there was no leaving of the city. Once we checked, we rested and we returned, did we not? The only reason we were running was to make sure that people that we knew in the city were safe. If we can take the fight to them and not have them come back, then we know for sure that the people that we care about here are, are going to be safe. There are other people in this city that I care about, but they were the only ones that I could guarantee I knew where they were. Everybody else could be anywhere. There's no point in running through the streets like mad people, hoping and praying. Concentrate on what you can do. But, as we say, I side with Toto and striking them where they hide, because if you did not see, they all vanished in an instant. Port portals opened up and they just disappeared through them. If they, if that's how they arrived, it's you cannot. I cannot see how you can prepare for this. What about our Dumaka? Does she have an opinion either way? I'm not very sure about what to do. Maybe I think Elizabeth has her rights in her thinking, but I will go with the rest of the group. That's me. Maybe we should take a vote on it. Right. All those in favour of chasing after the ship? Aye. 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 And those in favour of not? Hi. And do you have a vote to cast, Maka? Or are you abstaining? I told you I have to go with the rest of the group more. You want to go, so... Suppose we are going to. That's four against one. This is a fool's errand, and all three of you are to blame for this. I will write a song when you guys die. But for this, I'm still here. I would advise you not bother. The only time I've seen you perform, you did not do well, so I would advise you not to even attempt to write any song, ever. And you, as we have said so many times, are more than welcome to stay behind. No, no. If the cleric boy is going to die, then might as well be in I guess we don't all need to go back and tell the whatever that is. So I'll I'll wait out here a while. Uh, we're in the room. She left. We didn't move out. She did. Oh, then someone needs to bring her back in. Um, before that, Cloud will um using the bangle of 
telepathy, um, Seder Toto. I don't react, but I don't know much about these uh, Illithid Mind Flare things. But the few stories I've heard, none of them are good. So I do not believe they are on the right side, but fighting on both fronts is not a good idea. But we should be prepared just in case she more than likely screws us over. She's going to like try and sneaky side eye. Like, also, Cloud, um, she's not here. Do you think it's worth uh, searching this room to see if there's any cool shit? I'm assuming you say that out loud. Yeah, I say that out loud. I do not believe that's a good idea. Maybe next time. That was the perfect opportunity. Okay, okay. I've had enough theft for one. And Cloud just sort of looks at him like, I know something's happened, but that's just put an extra sizzle on the, on the ideas. I'll tell you about it later. I'll tell you about it later. Can we just shout like, "Hey, we we we're done talking"? I'll go and knock Roll on it. the wall wherever she disappeared. What I do the one two on the third tap, remember anything goes back, and she's just standing there. Are you? And they're kind of almost getting impatient. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I think the mic didn't catch up, catch your, your whispering there. Anish, are you? Yes. You made your decision. Well, I believe we want a few details, but more than likely, yes. Sorry. And she walks over. She's no longer carrying the books. The books have been left in wherever the other quarters are, and the membrane thing closes over. Walks over to one of the many kind of diagrams, displays, notes on the walls that she's got, and she points out to one that's written in a uh, very strange dialect. Uh, Language was. I have it. Keith Yankee attack patterns to try and anticipate where the next one would be. And where do you think the next one will be? Pattern. Yeah, your mic keeps cutting off. I don't think it's picking up the raspy voice. Give me a sec. You guys want to check the, the audio thing? That and it essentially just deep throat the mic and just do the raspy voice, but you have a slight window of opportunity before the next attack happens on its original scheduled date in full force. As I said, this is a splinter group. You're acting out of order. 
which for Kith Yankee is very strange. They might seem ruthless, but they're also efficient. She says with a certain reluctance at the end. Okay, so once again, where would they be on their way to? She pulls up uh, a rolled up map of Taldorian and says, Here. Point to Western. So and I also have ideas that they may have also tried. And she points to Vasselheim and Imon as well. You know for certain these places have been hit, or you assume? My assumption comes that all three places will be hit in the main strike. This group acted early. Possibly accelerating the overall timetable if you take out the splinter group at their source. Possibly dissuade the attacks. Persuading the Gith Yankee that their resistance at this point would be too high to risk casualties. So where do you believe the source of this splinter cell is? Most of the Gith Yankee reside in limbo. I believe that that is the same for this group in a different area. Isolated. Fortunate for you. And she pulls out this weird looking kind of mixture of like diagrams and weird glyphs. I have the navigational charts as Limbo itself cannot be charted. But these charts can help you locate an object floating within the chaos. In other words, their launch facility. The dockyard floating among the, the chaotic winds of limbo. She rolls it up, puts a little band in it, and hands it out, just kind of holding it. Cloud will uh, take it and um, say, well, this is all running good, having a map to where they more likely are, but I don't know But uh, about the rest of the group, but I definitely have no powers to get here, and as well as I do not have any access to these flying ships, so I cannot get up to uh, them if they are in the air. I believe Limbo is another plane entirely, and I do not believe any of us have the ability to plane travel. But the ships do. As they walk from one end of the room, she pulls up a very hastily put together list of names. I believe that you encountered someone who might actually be able to fly one of those ships. And she sinks back in her chair and goes, technically two. But only one will be of possible persuasion. I believe only the gift can fly those things, correct? And yeah, with a very sharp hand, just kind of extends out to clown this point, goes, The feline is correct. And one of the tentacles kind of comes up almost amusingly, kind of just like, Pressing against her forehead as if like, ooh, clever cat. So you wish us to get a GIF Yankee to help us fly? Jeff the GIF. It's within the realms of possibility. If we want to return to its people, or die trying. If it doesn't already try to escape, it will eventually, so why don't you offer it an alternative? Because Following it may help you. Destroy it with the rest. 
Oh, well, yes, that is very good, but uh, taking a ship somewhere is very nice, but then having the pilot killed and their friends killed and not having a way home uh, is not uh, exactly a point of view that I enjoy. You're almost an eye roll from her. She's like, ah, you primitives are so furiating at times. Am I not? I mean, most of the time. Primitives that you're sending to do your fucking dirty work. My other assets are busy. And she kind of almost, like, jolts up. Otherwise, I would have dealt with this situation myself. Well, how about this? If you can give us a way that... Maybe we can pilot the ship in some way, would be better, or have some sort of control over the ship. Then we can definitely come to a bit better arrangement. Make a persuasion check. The tentacles kind of move around in a sort of like loading bar almost like in a way from one side to the other like thinking, thinking, thinking. There may be a way but it will take time. And access to the ship. Are you telling me you don't believe someone that's meant to be working for the Cobalt Reserve would be able to get onto the ship? I would need time to work on it, especially in the area of, ex of requirement that you're asking to make the vessel work, uh, work in your hands would be quite an undertaking. But you could do it if I got you access to the ship. Again, oh, she doesn't have eyebrows, but you can kind of have that kind of raised expression. Like, Indeed. However, I have business elsewhere that I need urgent attending to, so... Unfortunately for you, that option doesn't seem to be available right now. Even if I did have the, the means to go and help. So how do you advise we get home if you're giving us an option and then telling us the option isn't actually an option? That I can have prepared in a lot shorter time scale. I just need to go retrieve the item in question. Does that sound more appealing to you all? Is it something... Uh, well, the idea of converting one of the ships to be able to be flown by one of us, is it something that's just inside your head, or can you... And he gestures to Toto. Show him how to do it, or give him the diagrams to do it. It would be something that only I would be capable of at this point. As I say, you are slightly... And by slightly, she gestures quite widely with her arms, with like both opposing hands. Behind in such matters. Now we could sit, we could sit here and dip, go back and forth, but right now your options are... Pretty limited. Well, you mean your options are pretty limited. Version slightly drops a little bit as if like, oh shit, said the wrong thing. <laughs> because our options are go and chase it, kill you, take your books and give your books to them to get our people back, wait here for them to come here, or walk away and let you deal with it. That's quite a few options. So can I suggest you stop being cryptic and an arsehole 
and actually help. Make a persuasion check, please. Natural 20, okay. She actually almost goes straight through the desk, which kind of, not breaks, but kind of well, weirdly kind of like, like ripping a scab, kind of like peels apart and then reforms behind her. She steps through it, goes right up in your face and just goes, You really are just an irritating little shit, aren't you? Fine. I'll put my own matters aside. And she's getting, mm. oh, she's like six foot nine, bordering on like nearly seven foot roughly when she stands up in full bitch come at me po posture. And she just leans into Elspeth's face with the tentacles almost like going for almost a grabbing motion. Goes, if you really are showing such that you need to be handheld, then I might as well join you. Be warned. And the hand just goes right up to your face. That in itself carries significant risks. Now I suggest whatever preparations you want to do, do so over the next. There's a brief moment for us, which thinks. Two days. After that. The opportunity for surprise will be a lot less effective. Okay, thank you. We shall take our leave. Do we meet you back here in two days? Yeah, she points up the way goes. At the same library as before. Uh, and she gestures and the, the room door wasn't actually closed but it's kind of just like making a point of it is now wide open and all the lights are on in the, hall the hallway back to where the stairs were and goes now leave I have work to do Elspeth will make sure she's the last one out of the room yeah, and uh, Elizabeth's gonna walk out first, just like the moment the door's open. As soon as you just get off of, like, the chairs and start walking out, these things kind of, kind of rather gingerly recede back into whatever pods they were kind of hiding in, and then the little pod thing is kind of almost like, get up and walk away, or slither away as it would be. Does the uh, spiral stairs come back down? Yeah, as you approach it, it just kind of goes. And then moves back into place. Um, when when we get to the top of the stairs, is she still? Did she stay downstairs? She's still downstairs. Awesome. Um, when we get back upstairs, Cloud's gonna grab that bottle that they drank out of. If that's all right. Yep. You grab one of the bottles. And you hear a voice going. Try not to. Get caught using that. Authorities don't really tend to like such things in other people's positions. Well, it's very difficult to find stuff on me at times. And he pops it in his bag and walks away. As you're all ready to leave, you just, uh, once the spiral staircase climbs up, you just hear a final, just like, Remember, two days. Back here. And then silence. Well, I don't like her. I just soiled myself. I've seen some interesting sites, but that's, well. Since I've been with you lot, I've seen a lot of interest in new sites. That's just probably top of the list now. So, I don't even know what to say. Why would I'm not you... 
I'm not too sure if the tentacles was a bit arousing or disturbing. Oh, I thought about it. You both get fucking what the fuck look from Elspeth right now. <laughs> well, we all know what aisle of uh, manga shop these guys tend to walk down. <laughs> Yeah, have a browse from time to time, you know. Toto's definitely the kind. No offense, we've seen, we've heard from Justice and everything, so Toto seems to have no standards. Exactly. Uh, Copies uh, just left this entire thing. She's just making her way to the inn. There's a surprise. She walks off on her own. All I want to do is sleep, but I believe we have an appointment with Miranda, because apparently we're suddenly the most wanted people in the city. I've been fairly wanted in this city for a while, but not in a good way. I think we're wanted in a good way. I will hope it's a good way anyway. Is it a good idea, the rest of it? Is this a, just a you 2 thing, pointing at Cloud and Elspeth? Or is this an all of us thing? Because last time all of us went, we were kind of dicks. Well, the way she was talking, I believe it's a just him thing, but she didn't indicate that. Oh. I gotcha. Cloud just smiles and gives them a wink. Oh, What's new, pussycat? I mean, if you Give want, I can find out what she's into. I know someone that has done that. Why? Would you like to come with as well? Mm, now there's an offer. I'll have to consider it. Cloud's smile just gets bigger. Shall we make our way as a team? Well, we did say about not splitting up, so it might be an idea for the time being. I'm... We can at least wait outside. I'm going to send Copy, uh, not out of game, Copy, Elizabeth in game, uh, a message going, uh, we have an appointment with Miranda, you're more than welcome to come, or you can wait at the inn, it's up to you. Uh, after a couple of minutes, you'll hear a message back. What time? Well, we're going now. I'll think about it. I have let our fr friend know that where we'll be, so... If there's any trouble, I'm sure she'll come and find us. Okay. So as all you guys are making your merry all way to uh, Miranda's estate on the Opal Ward, we're going to quickly jump out of you and go back to our little blue boy who is in a bit of a tight spot. Hey, Alex. He's been sitting there like, oh, patient, let's see what kind of nasty shit you're up to. So... Well Currently, he's unconscious. Yeah, you got that the fuck out. <laughs> yes, floating homunculus will do that to a person. Yeah, it will. <laughs> oh, I've, I've, I could only just get like, it taps like what Vincent's face would have looked like after yeah. watching that. Yeah, with I thought, yeah, I just thought it was Warforged with actual <laughs> flesh attached to it, not a homunculus. Well, technically, you can be like, oh, I kind of had a rough idea where it might be, option A, B, or C, but... <clears throat> anyway, so... After, you know, being knocked the fuck out, you actually awaken in a cell, along with your co-conspirators, who are also a bit worse for wear. Yeah. And in these cages, you suddenly hear, like, very heavy and forceful footsteps... Devil, in fact, as two Githyanki knights flank the 
leader, as it would be, of this little splinter faction, which has got like half of his face burnt and sc- and quite gnarly looking now. And through the bars at you. I just look back at him. That's a lean further forward. There's, there's like the occasional kind of sound of like cla- of like chains clattering and the occasional yelp of pain from like other cells. The box. Where are the books? Have the others been returned home safely? At which point you can reach you to the bars. Where are the books? I will uphold my end of the bargain and you uphold yours. Kill me and lose all knowledge. Kill them, lose all knowledge. That is the current bargain. Uphold your end, I uphold mine. Yeah, quite a young looking fella come up again and goes, Oh, come on, you can't be seriously listening to this little parasite. Comes in and he's got like very ornately uh, red robes and just like crimson hair. With like glowing red eyes behind them. Not oh, seriously, still putting on this charade as if he actually knows where the books are. He probably doesn't even know what we're looking for. And the guy, Yankee, like leader, dude, looks back and goes, Let me handle this. Struggling with common as he has before. So it would seem you're not truly the leader, considering that one is giving you orders. He does not like that comment at all. Like the the scarred side of his face is starting to twitch a little, just like like patience is wearing off full thin. Oh yeah. I did learn some tricks from copy. Well, at which point he looks at one of the knights and says, bring me one. The two knights move away. You can hear shackles getting undone. First one they bring in is your little green-haired friend. Where are the books? You're not upholding your end of the bargain. So, go ahead. Do it. Do it. I dare you to. I will remove all knowledge of the books, and I will remove all existence on this ship. If you do, that is a promise. Just as the young leader goes to reach for his sword, starts to unsheath it. Yes, here I have come and found the crimson haired fella standing next to him. No, no. Let me have a go at him. Since last step, it wasn't exactly impressing anybody. And yes. you see this kind of. Sc- he's not quite scrawny, but he's not exactly like, well built looking. And he just starts to just puts one hand on the, the prison cell bars and just opens the cage itself just with a little effort. Shh. Yes. You would be the dragon. Yes, slow claps and goes, Oh, you really are a cleric of I you and right enough. You figured that out on yourself, did you? Yes. Well, tell me, he just kinda leans with his elbow against the stonework behind you goes Do you actually know what we're looking for? Are you straight or bullshit me because 
I am really, really fed up with this charade you're putting up, and if you have any any inclination of any useful information, you might as well tell us now, because otherwise, this isn't going to end well. Well, it wasn't going to end well for you. The best of times, and it's kind of almost getting smarmy with it. Like, but right now, I would consider your situation from slightly fucked with a little kind of like the forefinger and thumb, just like, oh, a little bit slightly fucked. So his hands going out, going, totally, I am going to make this one for the ages level of fucked. Oh. I am a clarifier unit. I have access to knowledge you wouldn't even begin to estimate. But then again, you're just a dragon. What could you, you say possibly... just a dragon? He immediately just puts his fist through the wall behind you. <laughs> just a dragon! Yes, let's face it. I've lived through dragon attacks. You? <laughs> you're nothing compared to them. You're n Hell, are you even a dragon? Aren't you just a wormling? At that point, even the Kith Yankee leader dude decides to take a very tentative step back. As you can just see the glowing red from, uh, uh, orangey red glow from this guy's neck start to come up. And he just turns around and, <sighs> and torches Genji right in front of you. Just out of frustration, just <sighs> barbecues him on the floor. You just hear he's like painful, like, <sighs> just. Tormented scream as he just gets torched on the floor. They get the Yankee Yikes kind of almost getting singed themselves as they kind of back off and go, Oh, fuck. Uh, that's hardcore. And a few seconds later, Genji's nothing but kind of just charcoal on, like, post Pompeii looking, like, frailed up body on the floor. Am I meant to be impressed by a Wormling's fire attack? looks at you straight in the eye, you just see like poles of this pulsating red magma like in its head, it's like even in Broken Common the, the gift the Yankee leader kind of goes call him Wormling one more time okay second rate wyvern at that point, the humanoid looking hand gets almost beast like as his hand just comes up to your throat. When the voices get deeper, you will move the day. I will make sure you see that freaking library of yours burn for this. And anyone Better who cares about, I will cert no, he's strangling you so the words can't escape, even escape your mouth. And says, and I will search all of Alexandria for those you care about, and I will put them to the pyre just like that one. And he gestures back to JP and Jesus now, barbecued corpse. Actual dragons have tried and failed. You will not. <coughs> There's a few brief moments of like frustration where he's just tempted just to break your neck and get it over and done with, but he sits, finally composes himself, lets you go. Oh, what's the matter? I've got it in you to finish a job, Wormling. Give me one moment. Out of game. <laughs> no problem. So I think I just found my new favourite pastime of insulting dragons. I don't know what I fucking missed. I literally just went to the toilet and I came back and you were getting chucked. Yeah, I literally started calling this dragon a wormling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is about to die. A wormling is not a good idea. 
we just need to work out that if did the gift take anything really cool or useful that we have any point in going to steal back because obviously I don't think we're going to be rescuing Visca. Well, the gift hurt multiple points in West Run, so the chances are they've stole some. Maybe some useful shit. It will depend on what you find if you do go. Aha, there we go. He walks out there and pulling his hair back, kind of in that very sort of frustrating moment, goes, Won't say so of your own accord. 100 points, and I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. You suddenly feel a lot more compliant as the effect of dominate person takes hold. At which point he goes, Tell me everything you know right now regarding those books. Whether you're being truthful or what possible location they might have been, just tell us where they are now. It's just like almost frantic. But before you say a word, and he just goes up to the uh, the get the anchor commander and holds his hand out, and the complies and puts a pile of parchment in his hand with a quill, and a little ink quill. Thank you. Walks back over and goes, names every member of family, any close associates. Even people you even so much as had a common sort of like sales relationship with, uh, common vendors, whores, I don't care, have their names on these sheets unless in the next few moments while well, you have a good think of where those I tones just take are. The quill and write your mother. You're a dominated dude, you just fucking do it. Hang on. Would I have enough willpower to bite my tongue? Dominated did. Yeah, you don't have any control over yourself. You have, you have no. to dominate monster is significantly higher level than dominate anything else. So. Yeah. yeah, but dominate person just means he is under that person's control and he's just basically a slave. Yeah, to you have to, cast it. yeah, you have to follow the action they give you. Yeah, I was just checking. Why did I have to roll f so fucking shit on my first fucking roll of the night? Yeah, um, let's see. Okay. Do it. Well, scrolling down the list of everyone you think that, that he's list off that you make as potential targets, where they are, well, most likely to be found. All the people, whether it be family, friends, Close associates, where they're most likely to be found, etc., uh, etc. Et Basically, it's the party, everyone from the fucking temple, Ayun herself, um, members of the Slayer, play members of the Slayer's take, and finally, a crew of sailors location somewhere on the sea. And you just go hand them over and go, here you go. If you snatch them at your hand, hands them and they get the Yankee commander or, or whatever his position actually is. Pulls them up, puts them in his ar in, fold, anyone in the fold of his armour. I just uh, had to write them, didn't I? Yeah. He didn't say what language I had to write them in. There's a leap of logic, dude. Of course he... You would have, well, either, spe either specify, make sure I can read it, or, you know, don't Damn. get an ass. You're I'm complying joking. with them, so you're not going to fuck with them in any way here, dude. You're bent over a barrel right now. If you don't want him to go from a red dragonborn to a black dragonborn and him to bend you over and go full on, I suggest cooperation. <laughs> but, yeah, so, after that, he then says, do you know Anything about the books we're looking for? 
Or better yet, do you even know what we're looking for? Yeah. As in the contents. You're looking for books. Going by your frantic need, it's probably something to do with either war, telepathy, or geography. Either way, it's probably not the most common book you'll find in the actual library, which means it's either in the possession of someone who shouldn't have it, meaning it's currently underneath Western, or it's currently in the vault underneath the Cobalt Reserve, which means it's underneath Western and protected by paladins. My guess is, it, considering the nature of your entire being, it probably belongs to an asshole called Victor, who is some sort of weird fecking mage who created that exploding homunculus. And that is currently in the sewers of Westrun. You can have that whole sort of like face palm telling to eye ever tasting this like them. Like, he doesn't actually know what we're looking for. The others might benefit from those types of books, but it's not what we're looking for. And he kind of looks at the command and he goes, then what do we do with him if he is not sure what we would do? <sighs> I hope you're ready for barbecue again, my friend. At which point the commander just steps back and goes, I'll be sure to get uh, through that list in due time, but little boy, till then. On blue, red on blue. Goodbye, wormling. <sighs> and just roast you in the cell. Roll the damage. Let's see if I actually do survive somehow. Hang on. Let's go to the monster manual and double check what the damage would be on this. Until Max had another character ready to go for the last <laughs> couple of games because he's just been pushing those buttons. Almost as if he wanted to die. No, I was trying to figure out how this would play this and realising he had no other way to get everyone safely since they were going to keep doing this. He was just going to do whatever he could to try and get them to destroy their own ship. And pissing off a dragon so much that they used their fire breath was one of the things he thought, oh, that might actually do the trick. But now you've given them all our names. Yep. And our locations. And probably the <laughs> ranking of who's most important. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Due to Visca's fire resistance and the fact that he had one hit point from being conscious, he's not straight dead. You're unconscious, severely charred. The last thing you see before you go fade out of consciousness is him just standing over and just going, oh, for fuck's sake, just die. And just stamping on your face repeatedly. What's Visca's last words? Fuck oh, all, because he's gone. <laughs> he's just, that, that was just like, whatever you would have said. But I... Imagine that, but I imagine that when Visca takes the damage, he snaps out of dominate person, and then he must realize. Yeah, it was goodbye, Wormling. What you said before, I actually hit you with the flame. So both, just nope, nothing. You say nothing. You get nothing. There's nothing. There's just like, uh. That's a bit of an asshole move, not allowing someone a last word. <laughs> he got plenty. <laughs> he's had two extra games worth out of this character that he should have been dead a long ago, so he's got... <laughs> Which, by the way, nice job, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And an entertaining side act, if ever there was one. Yeah. <laughs> and what's more fun than pissing off a dragon? He coming after all, it's all the dragon's piss-off-ease. Friends and family. 
Well, considering he doesn't have any family, it's literally just the party, a couple of merchants, and the clergy, as well as guild members he'd worked with, as well as the sailors who brought him across to Taldora. It has. It's going to be fun. I, I do have to ask, because um, I kept on meaning to ask you this before, but the the dragons, were they young dragons or were they adult dragons? Because you were saying both the same. The three that were involved in the actual attack on Westron were young dragons, young adults. This one, although the actual party wouldn't be aware of it, was an adult. Right, I'm just interested. <laughs> And again, yeah, he's red, so I think they're kind of their egos like top out the five chromatics. So I can't attributing him to just being a warmling, or or if you were if you were hitting literally the the big red button of like kill me please, that's just how you do it. Anyway, that's in a little well, barbecue. Yeah, the, is the ship destroyed for his dragon breath going off. They're not on a ship, dude. You were in a cell block in somewhere very nasty that you got dropped off at last time. Where do you think the ship went to? Oh, I wasn't sure. Oh. Yeah, they basically delivered you somewhere, and then you started trying to have your little slave of it, and you just tried to have your little Spartacus moment, and then got blown to bits by Victor's little homunculus. Yeah, I thought we were still on the ship that all. No worries. And the ship docked. It was unloading you guys somewhere. Anyway, back to the Prime Imperium as I approach the Opal Ward. Go through the various streets, there's still a lot of like damage control being done. Proper shields are out on full force now after the surprise attack. And you notice the ones that are usually under a few familiar faces that are Miranda's uh, kind of private security or homestead guards or whatever you want to kind of phrase them as. See you guys approaching, whisper amongst themselves, and then start to approach. On the walk over, Cloud would have pulled out one of the um, pendants and putting it on his uh, jacket. They recognize it and go, She's expecting you. Head on inside, don't cause any trouble. You hear that, Tika? No trouble this time. Off the guard step aside, and there's just a big long old walk towards the front door. Cloud holds up first and knocks on the door. Door opens just because it wasn't locked, just like go inside, it's open for all open all hours. Yeah, uh, Cloud will look back and see if everybody's coming in or if some any of you wanted to wait outside either way. Do you think you'll do better by yourself, or should we all come in? It's up to you. Well, I'm quite happy for your coming, but... Uh, if there's family issues, looking at Toto, uh, it can be left for another time. I'll leave him at the door. There's nothing you can say that would change us. We will always be on your side. But with that, let's go. And Cloud will walk in. Oh. Cloud just follow, kind of? Yeah, Toto will follow. Okay, as you guys. 
Go inside. Oh, and my cup. Yes. As you four guys all walk in, you can hear like a smattering of voices uh, from the study that you have previously spoke to Miranda inside. As you approach the doorway, uh, the door's slightly ajar, but open for if you wish to enter or otherwise. Uh, Cloud will knock on the door. The conversation comes to a, bit, a slow halt. The door opens, there's a couple of fancily dressed folk and Miranda all standing around going, Ah, you're early. Yeah. Early, late. But always when we need to be. Do I recognise any of the fancy dress folk? Looking around, it's mostly just... Well, actually, yourself, do me a favour, make a perception check. Uh, we'll just let you roll from the evening. What the fuck is happening? Hey, uh, well, there's two gentlemen in particular who suddenly get very sort of rosy cheeked as soon as you walk in and try to hide in the back, as they were the <clears throat> pair that you dealt with when you had your little, shall we say, Evening. Evening, yes. Oh, I am not making eye contact with those two. You also recognise uh, two particular smaller people who are also in amongst the, the crowd. One with white hair, a scar on her face, and some really nice looking armour. The other one wearing... Casual gear, most with a lot of purples, and has a very n cheeky grin on his face as if he said something. He said something like very inappropriate, and just waiting for the penny to drop. Cool. Being, of course, Pike and Scanlan. Yep. At which point Miranda kind of looks and says, "Well, everyone, these are some of the people who have who were helping out in our fair city." At which point they all kind of look at it and go, hey, and goes like, oh, congratulations, well done, blah, blah, blah. And this is like a super, uh, sudden outburst of commiseration has been given for your efforts. Even though technically you were running to get out of the city and fuck off completely. <laughs> uh, potato, potato. What they, doesn't, what they don't know won't hurt them. At which point Miranda goes, oh, I should have mentioned from later. And she addresses us to the other end and says, if she's go up through here and take a left, and she can address us up the, st uh, the stairwell as she comes out the study and goes, take a left. There's a couple of rooms. I've had my guards kind of prep for you, if you wish, to freshen up because, and she kind of looks up and goes, I can tell there's been a bit of prestidigitation being used here. And trust me, you've all learned a much needed uh, bit of recuperation so while we all have our little thing in here if you guys want to go freshen up no one will blame you like her mood is like completely different to it it's almost scary just how different her mood is right now I was just going to look at Cloud Mac and Toto like do we? Do we not? Cla Cloud just back, nods his head and says, certainly, and goes, yes, and starts heading up the stairs. Okay. Cloud heads up, and one of the guards is standing at his ends and goes, ah, and he opens the door for you. Couple looking at it in this room, there's another couple looking go in the other room. Trying not to make a mess, the lady of the house doesn't like. Yeah. 
having her things mess, uh, left in disrepair. I believe we all know how to behave. You don't have to babysit us. Oh, if you wish is to take it just your... like a wash basin type thing, or oh no, it's like guest rooms, like top tier sort of inns and hotels and places where you would normally stay. This is like literally her like guest rooms for when she has like family, friends, business associates over, and like nope, here have them. You guys have done quite a lot for. And she's gonna like, oh, go get get cleaned up, please, because y'all look like hammered shit. Go in the very um, well furnished guest rooms, washing facilities, uh, flesh linen on the bed, and the bed sheets are fresh. Everything's all just like, damn, this is high class shit. I assume it's a bath rather than a shower. I don't know if the showers are invented yes. in Seltorae. Yes, it's the sort of rockish looking, I would say, kind of all bath style, like style baths units. Each each of the three rooms that she's kind of like had pre-made for you has got at least one each. And it's kind of got like a kind of partition bit so you can have a bit of privacy while you use it. At least two beds to each room, so. As you're all gonna go, if he's all go upstairs, I don't know if it's just Cloud that went up himself. Oh, or no, everyone I else would have gone up. Yeah, yeah, I totally would have gone up. Mac, are you coming up? Yes, I'm coming. As all four of you go up, uh, the guard says. As I says, try not to make too much of a mess of uh, her ladyship's things. And she says, and if you require anything else, just to give one of us a call. And it starts taking out with her, almost like a slouch, just starts to walk down the stairs. It's like, uh, in the meantime, you have to do as you please. Elspeth calls before he goes and goes, do you happen to know if she's expecting us to dress up or we had to find to go back in what we're currently wearing, just clean up? Uh, her ladyship says that there should be a selection of clothes that she can possibly get a hold of you for for you all, like more finer gear if you wish. Otherwise, come in whatever gear you deem fit. Basically, saying the option is there if you want to get a little more finely dressed, but it's not necessary. continues downstairs and you can hear the occasional sort of like almost rapturous uh, kind of sound coming from the study just as you just finally go up the stairs and go through your rooms and whatever arrangement you deem fit. Oh, Cloud as soon as you see if there's a bath there, Cloud just strips off and hops straight in. Oh. Go straight in and donk, it's not been filled yet. <laughs> Are all three baths in the same room, just with partitions? Yeah, no, one in each room. Okay. One in each room. There's a little partition bit so that if anyone, so that if anyone else is like, it's like like an ensuite kind of thing. Like, uh, what do you call the kind of Japanese style kind of like folding cover thing, so that someone oh, yeah, can get changed behind it. Like, like one of them, like but only slightly larger, room. so it's like a like a folding out wall essentially. Uh, yeah, so if you guys want to take that uh, a little bit to kind of do a bit of R&R, how you wish to kind of rest for the rest of the, technically, well, daytime, because it's actually still pretty, it's before noon, all that shit happened in the, like, previous day to the early hours of the Gith attack to now. Yeah, you've been, the last 
36 hours have been hell for you guys, so by all means. Can Elspeth get a long rest in? So four hours. Everyone has the option for their own long rest here. There's like, chill out, order some room service, clean yourselves up, do whatever kind of remedial tasks you want. Maybe inform your uh, rogue friend if, when she eventually like, arrives late to like, don't be a dick and just head upstairs. If you wish, you can tell her. Just oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm right. not, I'm not going there at all. I'm just going to stay, like, I'm just, I'm just going to stay, like, in an adjacent building, like, on the rooftop, just chilling there. And I'll take a short, long rest. Oh, you're sitting there going, I'm waiting for a long time, and you can do, take a long rest up on the top of a building, doing the whole, I'm renting out the, the brooding gargoyle pose thing that a lot of superheroes tend to do, just sitting there, just waiting for... Oh, lot of nothing. And the party gets a long rest. I go three rooms, four people. Oh, sorry, after Maka. Oh, Maka, what was that you saying? Mm, that's all for me. I want to take a long rest. Yeah, everyone gets a long rest. You get a long rest. You get a long rest. Everyone gets a long rest. God damn it, you all need it. Yes. Uh, Cloud will order if <clears throat> if she's offered to uh, um, acquire some finer clothes, Cloud will definitely take the opportunity to get some fi finer clothes if possible. Um... As you put in the request in, a little time later you just hear a chap at your, uh, your door. Just like a Cloud opens the door, probably just wearing a towel, waiting for the bath to be filled. And with a slight kind of almost pencil-like moustache, hair done back very finely, and with a set of like, uh, carrying in like a rack, goes, uh, good, good afternoon, Monsieur, Mister Cloud, I believe. That is correct. I am Marcel. I am I am Lady Keller's uh, personal tailor. I have a selection of fine outfits for you to try, if you wish. Ah, beautiful. Right this way, and he gestures inside. He's, he pulls out this kind of like clothing rack, and he goes, uh, so the door shuts behind him, and she closes it, he goes, Now, monsieur, do you have any colour preference? And he's kind of just like looking at your clothes, I see you have a little bit of a grey in your natural furs. We can work with that. Uh, natural furs, nice grey, black, silver. Um... You are the expert, uh, but I do do prefer something uh, flexible, movable, but still obviously very refined. It's, mm, let me see, let me see, let me see. And it gets like a kind of like a, almost like a, not a suit, but kind of like a very fancy like a dress gambeson kind of thing. It's like this just kind of got a little bit more of the. Compliment the gentleman's figure with a little bit of the, and he's, it's like black silk with silver trim. How does this, uh, how does Monsieur feel like this? So he kind of pulls out like a small hammer and just kind of pulls it. Ah, do you like? Is this for your taste? Ah, uh, you have a, I see why she keeps you around. You have a fine eye. Oh, you're too kind, Monsieur. You can use your uh, ball to cast towards you. I'm happy to please. I do have to ask, is Toto in the same room as me, or is there a different room with him? It's up to you guys how you want to divvy up to two rooms. Each room can hold at least two people. So there's only uh, two rooms, did you say? Three rooms, three. two people each. The option was to make sure that if, any, if all you guys all were still as a party, you'd all have at least an even split. Uh, Toto probably would like take the room with Cloud, but I do. Uh, he does have something he wants to do, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that once Cloud's done. So then Cloud would gesture over to Toto and say, um, something for the uh, gentleman as well. So I think, um, ooh, you know, some something rugged, but uh, obviously standoutish as well. Something that yeah. makes me look taller. 
Yes, it says in corner with ah, uh, Mr. Wants to kind of get a little bit of taller with the, 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 the ball, then he starts to like almost kind of the hand start kind of just like a ball, then you know, stand out from the crowd to make up for a while. It was lack of he kind of just does a gesture of like height, you know, thing is like, and it goes back to his rack and it goes through it and he pulls out what looked like. Somewhere between very fancy looking clogs and platform boots. Wow. I, uh, not really my style, but I'll give it a my. Just Mr. No Leg, I can swap to for something else. This was when you said bored and bashing to make up for your height. These, I've been wanting to get rid of these for a while. And can I just like throw them back into the rack? Just like casually. You get the impression that the rack's actually bigger on the inside because he just threw like a pair of like these very heavy partly wooden clog shoe things and just went and it disappeared into the rack. What I'm looking for is like a a shoe made of a, a kind of like a plastic, more of a rubber what kind of holes in the top. Sir? I never heard of such things. Basically what I'm trying to describe is Crocs. It oh, almost okay. has a sort of like I've just threw up in my mouth little bit of thing going on here like <laughs> Is this the mysterious taste? I told you it was bold. Cloud sort of standing over the dude's shoulder, just like, what the fuck? <laughs> it takes him a few minutes, but eventually, through other means, produce something that is akin to, like, raised crocs. <laughs> That's what I want, platform crocs. Essentially, yeah. Perfect. And would and kind of, he's almost hesitant to ask, would Monsieur like a, would Monsieur like, like the additional? He points to the heel, or the the platform bits on the heel, and noticing that there's like a, there's like almost like a strange hold out compartment in the platform bit. So would Monsieur like a, and he waves his hand over, and you can see like a goldfish floating in it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very classy. I'll take. And anything else, Monsieur? You've done a fine job here, my friend. A fine, goes, ah, fine one moment. job. He kind of goes and he just pulls out like a small smoking jacket type thing with like fur collar. Ah, oh, I didn't think this could get any better. That is a piece of just a masterpiece. It is a. I thought you were like the and can't. I just pulls it over the arm and goes, "Here you are." I, I slip him a gold piece. At which point he just puts it in his uh, top and say pocket and goes, thank you, Mr. Anything else before I go to your, uh, back to my duties? Well, if you could uh, drop by next door and help the, uh, provide the ladies with something. Uh, even if they say no, I'm sure that something nice would definitely uh, be a nice treat for them. No problem, Monsieur. I shall do so right away. Have a pleasant evening. Trust me, you'll not have a problem finding anything beautiful for those two. Challenge accepted. And he grabs onto the clothing rack as he starts to head towards it, opens the door, and heads out. Door shuts. Anything else before I jump into the ladies' room? Just order loads of room service. Just loads of food. And Cloud's just trying to have a bath. While Cloud's got on sort of like fine Victorian tux clothes and I've got a bloke from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like 70s tacky, but it's going to just like black silk with like a nice little silver kind of like trim. Not far off, so it's tacky, but it's not the worst of things. Platform crocs with <laughs> with fucking fish in the soles is pretty bad. You wanted bold and you wanted crocs. I thought, why not just put a cherry on top? Perfect. Or in this case, gold fish in the heel. But <laughs> okay, so yeah, you call it for some of the in house chef to kind of bring up some stuff for you and one of the porters come out and just like you know, ask us it's like little, t- little tray thing 
Yeah, and just with a little silver dome on it, like Bon Appetit, and they leave. Various like two bottles of there's like two bottles of wine, one for each of you. There's various fine foods and some nice little nibbles and shit. He's like, oh, this is classy shit. So, ladies, anything you want to do in particular during your uh, your rest and recuperation hours before Manuel shows up with his marvelous uh, menagerie of stuff? No, I don't believe so. Not for us, just at least. Is there anything in particular you want to do during your uh, long rest? Mm, no. No, just chilling out and relaxing and cleaned up and whatnot. So there's those. Again, there's the dual tap at the door. Are we in the same room or are we in separate rooms? I would assume the same rooms, if you want. I don't mind, that. either or. Yeah. I'll shuffle open the door. Yo, again, you see the gentleman with the pencil moustache sending it. Ah, uh, mademoiselle, uh, the gentleman next door says that you might re uh, require a little more of the finer things in life and points to the back. Very considerate of him. I am fine, however my friend over there may need some help. Uh, and I'll, she'll start like changing the colour of her clothes to indicate that she has control over her clothing. And he's actually sitting there going, Oh, I've always wanted to see one of these. Like He's almost like fanboying over there. He just like almost wants to touch the fabric. So, like, oh, apologies, my name. Uh, it's right, I'll hold out my arm to him and go, You can it's fine, no problem. He's just marvelling at it, it's just like, oh, it's so responsive, look. He's just marvelling at the colour changes as they happen, and all the texture changes, it's like, oh, no peace. Oh, such a fortunate lady to have one. And he goes, anyway, back to business, and he just kind of snaps himself out of it. Uh, Mademoiselle, pointing to Maka, is there anything you would like in particular, sort of style, sort of look, anything at all? Mm, no, I just need to rest. He's not like disappointed, but he's like, oh, okay, I thought the gentleman said you might like things, but um, anyway, if again, same to the gentleman next door, if you wish to have any sort of like uh, beverages, food, anything of like sort of creature comforts to be brought up, just need to give one of our, uh, one of the house servants a call. Until then, he kind of just like gives a little bow, takes a clothing rack, and leaves at the front door, door shuts. Uh, Elspeth will turn to Mac and go, would you like me to leave you to rest? I believe there's a spare room next door. I can go into that one. Leave you to your to your rest. Oh, no. Okay. Elspeth will stay put then. And she's just going to start flipping her clothes into like a million different dress options and not settling on any of them. Also, like a full size mirror in each of the rooms, by the way. So if he's working to do the whole sort of like. Oh. No, she makes sure she is not looking in the mirror. She flatly refuses to look in the mirror at all. We'll point out to one thing about uh, both rooms. At a certain point during the afternoon, you see something getting slipped underneath the door. Little folded bit of parchment just gonna slip underneath the door of each room. Have a little look, see? Elspeth will pick up their one in the girls' room. I imagine, like, almost like TV style, like, both of you just, like, at the same point, just kind of spontaneously pick the things up at the same time, just, like, unaware that the others doing the exact same thing in another room. 
open it up and each occupant of the room has been done in like past in little uh pastel drawings as you probably and signed off at the bottom keyleth I will hand matters to Mappa. Well, you guys are just like cooing over that. Copy, is there anything in particular while you're sitting on that rooftop, just like watching passers by, what I do while you're resting? Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally just resting there. Give me a favor, make a perception check as you're kind of just like watching things in the Opal Ward, just like pass by. That's a noob. You kind of just like, this has been a crazy couple of days. What the fuck? And not really actually paying attention to things passing by. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm basically just, I'm sleeping like that. That I'm just recovering. Oh. It is now the evening. Um, oh. Before we finish our long rest, um, Cloud will. I'm pretty sure I know it's nothing but Cloud wouldn't. So Cloud will probably go next door to the girls, knock on the door. And um, uh, Toto was going to do the same as well. <laughs> we oh, fair enough. Get... We both in the girls' by. room. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, we both go round to the girls' room and knock on the door. Who is it? Okay. I will open the door. Cloud will be dressed in his uh, new fine-looking suit. Um, but he will have the uh, silver gif longsword at his side. <clears throat> Uh, afternoon, ladies. Good you clean up very well. Of course I do. Um, but, uh, Maka, I was hoping you could have a look at this sword for me. Uh, see if there's anything special about it. Um, Maka, okay. uh, Maka, while you're doing that, could I get your attention, uh, maybe in private for a minute, uh, so we can have a look at that stuff we got from the shop yesterday or today? Uh, maybe we could do it all in one go. I'll, I'll sit with you. We can like have a look through it all. Why you don't come into the room and we can check all the stuff? Well, I, I'd rather do it. I'd rather do it in private. I'll look at Cloud and go, should we leave? Leave these two to do whatever it is they're feeling like doing. <laughs> no, I think that is a good idea. It's something I wish uh, for us to do as well. Oh, is there now? Yeah, before we go on that, just a little quick thing. Maka checks the silver sword. It is a silver one. It is a silver sword. Of Geth Yankee aesthetic, which uh, you hadn't really seen at all until these guys showed up. But you can see common things like it's very rough, but strangely elegant in a way, if you know what I mean. Like, quite fierce looking. And it has kind of red, not ruby, but kind of red gems and some description decorating the hilt and the cross guard. And some sort of leather thing in the grip. So it's. Yeah, I, I, I thought it weren't anything, but obviously, like I say, Cloud wouldn't have known, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought I'd just check anyway. So, anyway. So, Cloud now, Steph, leave room, and Toto and Maka take their. Loot from the shop <laughs> from Gilmore's, yeah. and you do all the, ver the various identification things necessary, and you figure out what the items are based. It's the apparel of power suit, 
I can never get the river this road right for me yet. So uh wind closure. But the Rock thing's giving you a bit of a weird way thing. I just started trying undo all kind okay, of stuff. I think it was kinda of kept it rolled up. The thing binding it together settles out. The thing unravels and it's a uh, quite a big rug looking thing with the uh, with Bahamut depicted on it. And as Total's kind of like this feels kinda weird and he kinda of stands on it un un unintentionally. It's so not just sweeps from underneath him. <laughs> he starts to float in the room. Yes. Point where it sta it stands in two corners, looks over at Toto, and is like they have got the Bahamut's face bit in the front, like kind of depicted like all lofty dragon kind of thing, and it's two kind of top tassel things kind of cross over like arms, as if like bet should you stand on me. It's the actual magic carpet. This is bang. It's a carpet oh. with attitude. Hey, I wouldn't have it any other way. I want to say, um, sorry for standing on you. Um, it was my mistake. Um, hopefully we, uh, this doesn't hinder any you of our You get the feeling that it's not the standing on it that actually annoyed it. It's more, it's just kind of like, again, with one of the corners, just kind of like points at itself. And then the stuff you are holding. Right. So, you want the stuff? It's the standard kind of cross again, crosses the folds again. Mako, what is going on? I don't know. Why are you asking for me? I don't know. This thing's looking at us weird, man. Does it want the stuff? Does it want us to get the stuff back? You make an insight check. Alright, yeah. Welcome to you want. Figure it out, try and forget what, what's wrong with the carpet here. Okay, what are you going to roll? I guess more surprised, like, fuck it, it's not only just a fancy looking carpet, it's like. Like, completely taken aback by the fact that it's magic and floating around and giving attitude and sass. So, oh, gonna get some kind of a weird reading from it. This thing's depicting, you know, the Platinum Dragon. And you guys some stole some shit. So it's not exactly like, you know, I know you're sorry, but you guys are assholes. That's kind of the vibe you're getting off it. If it had, if, like, if the carpet had subtitles or sign language, it'd be going, you, you guys... Wankers. Just. I'll say, uh, that uh, I'm sorry. I know it's, we did a pretty bad thing taking this stuff. I tried to leave money for it. So, you know, it didn't get looted by somebody else, but we, I just really want to keep my friends safe. And I really needed this stuff to do it. And I know I went about it wrong, but. I just really want to keep him safe. And I'm really sorry. Take a persuasion check. Fuck. Aka, do you want to see or do anything to the carpet? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not sure if we'll do what we do because we need all that stuff.
we tried to save the city, so I think it's normal to to look for a way to be safety. Make a persuasion check. Roll high, roll high, roll high. Yes. Yeah. It was not looking very good at total. Then I was like, Maka kind of doing it sort of like, I'm going from evil bitch to sorry mode. And it kind of just sits in, kind of goes like, for a moment, kind of goes up to its full sort of like tapestry like visage and then just kind of. Is a sort of weird sort of like one of its side tassel quote unquote hands it's gonna kind of brushes both your heads as if like you start and then just come it settles itself down on the ground oh floating a little bit but it's but the feeling it's gonna kick about for a while at least Maka this thing is awesome um, I do have some stuff to ask you, Maka. Can I keep these, um, what are they called, uh, the wound closure things? Um, can I keep these and you can keep the Pearl of Power? Okay. I don't mind. Okay, awesome. And the, the carpet... It, that that's a party present. That's a present for everybody. Okay. Uh, I also want to. Okay. Yeah, I also want to take one of the uh the the wound closure things. That they're on like a like a chain around the neck, right? Yeah, both have a little chain. Uh, can I? Like, kind of cut one of the chains down, like, a lot smaller. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I want to take them. I'm going to put them in my pocket. And then I'm going to go and find Cloud and Elspeth. I'm going to say to Maka, I'm going to find Cloud and Elspeth. Are you coming? Um, yes, I'm coming. Cool. As you guys go to leave the room to go find them, Cloud and Elspeth, what have you been doing the whole time? Now that's something. <laughs> uh, by the way, Elspeth is still wearing her normal clothes. She hasn't put anything fancy on. She's still just in her Elspeth clothes. So you wanted to do something. <laughs> yes, I just thought uh, he um, <clears throat> go into their previous room, sit on the bed, and he just gestures to the bangle of telepathy perfect, that you gave him. I uh, want to say, don't think I probably said, but uh, thank you for this. Well, it is a uh, small gift compared to what you gave to me, and just wanted to show my appreciation and help keep you safe a little bit. Well, thank you. And, uh, well, if you want to let me into your head, as it may be. Uh, she looks a little bit surprised. Like, why the fuck would he want to? connect with me, but then she sits down next to you. Mm, Cloud will stare into your eyes for a minute. Elspeth will spend the whole time not trying not to go, this is fucking awkward. <laughs> oh, oh, after like 10 seconds, Cloud starts like making his eyebrows go do, 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 do <laughs> and just start pulling faces a little bit and just being a bit of a dick, but having a bit of fun. Uh, towards the end, towards about 50 seconds, Elspeth will just start poking you, like trying to find a ticklish spot. <laughs> I'll see after a little bit of uh, 
shall we say, effort to maintain concentration despite all Tom Fully. You do eventually manage, after about maybe two or three tries, get the the telepathic thing, the link set up. Um, our character, may I just ask, um, where's the, where's Clover and the Mimic? I was actually just about to bring that up once you guys were finished with what you are doing in the rooms. So uh, you got I can't much more do you want to go through before we reintroduce our beloved uh, pets? Which the party I... always seems to be going to go, what the happened to those guys? <laughs> Not my pets to take care of. Um, I think, um, after... The link is made. Cloud will probably um, say to Elizabeth, um, "What do you think about uh, Elizabeth? Uh, she's well. You've seen what she actually is now, um, but she's a bit fickle as well." Mm, I'm still not sure on her. I'm. Would you like to know who she reminds me of? Who's that? Me, when I was a lot younger. Which is not something she wants to be. Uh, I'm worried her attitude will get her into more trouble than it should. Mm, this is true. Uh, I, well, it's funny enough that her attitude is... A little bit similar to one of my sisters, but I think that's something to do with the uh, their race, realistically. Potentially. My concern is I have had 130 years to grow out of my attitude. She does not have quite that long, and I don't want to see it end before it begins. No, truth be told, not, well, very few of us can live that long and grow out of an attitude. Most of us have to grow out, grow much quicker. Oh, believe me, I'm well aware. I was brought up where I was the only person of the long-lived race, so I am well aware of how short people's lives can be. And I... I suspect that you feel sad about that. Hmm. It's... I did for the longest while, but it's hard to continue being sad when you lost one... when you have only had one person that you've known you from childhood for the last 60 or so years. So they grew old. I was lucky enough to be left in apparently the one orphanage in the land that had an elf as its uh, caretaker. So yes, he is, he's growing old, but he still has plenty of years in him yet. But the friend you grew up with, did they all grow old as well? They, yes, most of them, most of them grew to old age and passed as natural causes. You lose the, the one or two. Uh, to extenuating circumstances. Well, truth be told, if they've grown up, it is something that we all have to deal with, but if they live their lives, you definitely should respect that. And you should never feel sad about living longer than them, especially if they've lived their lives fully. Just just because you live longer than them, you have to remember to make sure that you live your life as well. Don't just sit around. I do not believe sitting around is what I've been doing. I believe running is what I'll consider what I've been doing. Well, just... Remember that if they happily lived their lives to the fullest and lived well, make sure you spend 
your time living well as in their memory. That's the key thing I always remember. Make sure their memory is well. Agreed. And I will try. So how many sisters do you have? Give me a second, jump over to my bio. <laughs> Uh, from the family that came to Taldore, I have five. Uh, there was a few others that we left back home, but they all chose to stay. I would like to meet them all one day, I think. Especially if they're as interesting as Ellie is. Mm. Well, Ellie's all... Ellie's uh, probably a bit of the older, oldest of them. Uh, she's always been a bit of the mother. She never liked, as you saw, she didn't like, she doesn't like fighting, even though she's probably one of the best at it. Uh, and uh, you definitely don't want to upset her. Trust me, I've done that a few too many times. <laughs> But uh, most of them are still in Taldori. A couple have ventured elsewhere. But as we're already talking about venturing to different planes, I know, well, I'm pretty sure none of them have expanded that far away. That will be able to be something you can boast to them about that you've accomplished. <laughs> Very true. Uh, but uh, I think you missed Huggle the other night while you were collecting items. One of my, few, one of my brothers. Oh, so you have a big family then. <laughs> At. Uh, if I remember correctly, at one point there was probably about 30 of us. I always like to think that's the one good thing about coming from places that we were brought up in. Lots of family. Well... The difference is eyes. You... I, well, you never said it, but I assume you... You grew up in an orphanage, correct? Mm -hmm. We all came from the streets, my dear. Uh, we learned to fight and do what I do best because of that. The uh, streets of Nicodranas is not a nice place to grow up at times, but most of us survived. You've done very well. I can't imagine it was easy. Well, I made it through because I had family. We all took care of each other. That's definitely what family is good for. Next time we're in Amon, remind me to introduce you to the only family I have left. Well, <clears throat> if we're in Imon, then that will definitely be interesting. Uh, I, then I can introduce you to one of my other sisters. Oh, and yeah. my brother as well, if he's about at the time. Do you think we have left? Toto and Matt enough time to do whatever they were doing. Well, I'm pretty sure I remember Toto saying it only takes a few minutes. That does not surprise me. He looks like the type. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I, I feel can't give personally attacked. <laughs> I try not to laugh. I'm like, oh, that's just too good. Oh. And Elspeth would know as well. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, you guys finished up with what you're doing? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, as you go to look for Toto and Maka, you see them coming from across the hall and you start, as you're about to meet, all you hear is a kind of childish glee, uh, kind of like happy sort of like, yeah, kind of thing. You look over the barrister, you look downstairs and you see little Keyleth on the back of a little dire wolf with a familiar marking on its back. As Clover has just arrived. Awesome. But there's no collar. Oh fuck. What the instead, fuck is up to? Instead, on Clover's head, there's a witch's hat. And you're looking, where the fuck did the dog get the hat until you get a little look at it and every now and again when Kira looks at it a certain way, you see a little tongue going <laughs> and just like nah, 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 nah. every time she turns away it, turn, it just turns back into a hat. Giving itself away is the mimic. I'll turn to Mac and go, I believe our pets have made some friends. They were made a friend. Uh but also, uh can we me and Mac have the, the the uh the carpet kind of walk in behind us? Oh yeah, at this point Cloud and Elsewhere just see a shadow appear over them and you see this floating image of uh Bahamut embroisoned and like the finest of material just floating over them just like guys this, meet the newest member of our party and I point at the rug do I want to ask where you got it from you really don't and as you say you really don't it does that sort of like I'm going to fly real close and just going to spin you around thing just like to me or to say And it just turns to normal flight above him as Toto is kind of spun around two or three times. It's like, whoa, whoa fuck. All right, we it, we 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 procured it from a shop. We stole it. Okay, we stole it. But we're working. We're trying to show our new rug friend here that we're not bad people. I can understand like the place for all this stuff, but. Yeah, yeah, we paid for it. You tried to pay. But don't you yeah. think it's awesome? Yeah, as you as you just kind of see it on for a little bit, it's like it's got like it's kind of like ebony. Uh, Fibers with like silver linings over it, with like the platinum dragon kind of emblem kind of done over it, and fine little tassel bits in the corners. Which every now and again you swear form almost like humanoid like hands and feet every now and again. Just but you think nah, I can't do doing what I think it does. It's weird enough it's floating around, but having like appendages is weird. He's going to float in there next to Toto and Maka. Is this thing not the best thing you've ever seen? Maybe best not to bring it to the party if it's something you've stolen. It's going to be a real talking point. Trust me, you need to make a big impact at these kind of events. I mean... I'm not saying I'm peacocking with these shoes, but this bad boy is really going to get me the attention I deserve. Well, I am certainly starting to feel underdressed, surrounded by you guys. Well, I did the uh, gesture for the gentleman to come by and uh, for you to get some uh, new, different clothes. It never hurts to have some spares. Uh, the joy of my clothes is they turn to whatever I want them to be. I just could not decide what I wanted them to be. Um, Elspeth, uh, maybe 
I can help. Accessorizing is always good. And I do not need your you. wand of creamy healing as an accessory. It is, it's, it's, no, no, not my wand, uh, nor my cream. Um, I got you, <laughs> uh, I got you this, and I hold out the the periapt of wound closure, but I've made the um, the necklace part of it like smaller so it can fit around your wrist. Uh, and I just say, I know that you wear viscous gross eye around your neck so i i cut the chain shorter but it should stop you from dying in combat in the future and it should also help you um heal faster when we're not taking long rests um and it's just a present for you Thank you very much. Although, considering I'm not the one that's died in combat, maybe this is yet of a cat man. Well, funny you should say that. And I kind of just throw the uh, necklace one up in the air towards Cloud. And I'm like, there's one for you too. This doesn't mean you can die again, because I'm still need. I'm still thinking of a new name for the group. That's fine, but that will stop you dying again because I don't want that to happen. And me and Maka got these. We got these for you guys, and they were very, very hard to get hold of. And I just want to make sure that you guys stay safe. Um, because it was scary to see you die. I don't want to see that again. So, you two keep these, and I'll keep Maka safe, and then the four of us are all good. Also. Elizabeth also helped us get these items, and I'm really worried about where she is right now. I was just quite happy with the peace and quiet, but so be it. I mean, I can see if she's at least within message range of us. She did really help in getting this stuff, and this stuff is going to keep you two alive. And I don't know, it, it feels kind of unfair, the four of us being here having a good time, and her being out there on her own. It's dangerous. So I will send a message to Elizabeth and see if she's in range, and just go, we would like you to join us. There seems to be a party going on, and you helped as much as any of us, so we feel like you should be here. I will have message range, so if uh, Elizabeth would like to respond. Have I, because it has it been eight hours? Yes. I'll I'll respond. Uh, I'll I'll have a think about it. Parties are not really my. Well, if you need us, we're obviously close by. Just send a message and we'll help. Thank you. And I'll turn to Jiz and go, she's close, she got my message, but she does not want to come. Parties are not her thing. Okay. As long as she's safe, that's fine. I feel kind of bad. Like, she said some shitty stuff, but I feel like we were kind of dicks today, as per. I mean, not that she's not a dick, but still. Oh, I think we've lost Amy, by the way. Yeah, she was having issues, I think, technical stuff. Back in a sec. I hope. We were a bit hard on her. However, at some point you need to learn to bend. I don't know, maybe we should kind of sit and talk to her before we do this Gif Yankee thing and just kind of clear some stuff and just make sure they're all on the same page and that, you know, we can we can kind of get back on track and kind of start fresh before 
we head into danger. I feel like that's a good idea. Should we go to the party and get fucked up? Let's be careful what we drink this time. But yes. I wanna get messy. Let's try and not make a bad impression. Uh, I think we did that the first time round. Yes, but not in front of a, of a house full of guests. You ever seen the rich party? Them them geezers get fucked up. This, the only way that we're going to be able to compete with them is to just head straight down there. Shots, shots, shots. Am I right, Cloud? Well, it depends on what sort of party. It could be a, um, a swingers party, a drinking party, dr drug party. All of, of the above. The... Well, I've seen a couple of those before as well. Toto just starts rubbing his hands together. As you all ready to go downstairs? Mm hmm. Downstairs, you go into the study room, and of course, there's Miranda standing there with a glass in hand. All a few folk who were there earlier have uh, are kind of still hanging around. Others have left, saying that they'll come back once other things have been taken care of and will, should be by the way things going. Arriving back shortly. And Miranda is standing there with almost like an almost devilish grin on her face just when she goes, like, Ah, my good friends, how are you all doing this evening? Much better, thank you, my dear, for your hospitality. Yes, it was very Second nice. Second to given your actions of late. Back in our chair and say, and she says, please take a seat. And there's like very fancy armchairs and buffets and little long couches all uh, arranged in the places. Uh, a particular table that's got drink and food on it. She says, please celebrate. Take the load off. It's been an eventful few days for us all. A uh, little bit of an understatement, but. Very true, nonetheless. Mm, Cloud will take a drink. Mm. Very Sni sniff it a little bit first, just it is cautionary. Perfectly fine, top shelf wine. Very floral bouquet. It's like, hmm, very good red, as it would be. Cloud sort of passes it to Toto and just starts passing out the drinks to everybody. Elspeth will decline. Yeah. Thought so. At which point, uh, before you see, uh, Amanda goes, ah, 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 and she points to the bottle next to the one you got from, and it's got like a little bit of a diamond to the, the label saying it's like 0%. Perhaps that will be more to your taste. That would be. Thank you very much. It's a fact of cater for all my uh, friends and associates. And while she does say that, she does have a bit of a side eye towards Toto. Just for a moment, was memories of Toast goes. You were all present and accounted for. To those still to come. I can't tell you things in the future. And Gina raises the glass and goes, Cheers. Take a sip. Can you hear now, Ellie? Oh. 
I thought with her being closer, the technical issues would be like less of a problem. <laughs> mm, depends Very on like, where she's got a connection, doesn't it, though? Can you hear us? Now I can. Awesome. Yeah, Cloud will always... pour Elizabeth uh, a drink from the non-alcoholic wine, and um, as he does, he'll say to Miranda, um, uh, the Malfi one is elsewhere at the minute. Um, we have invited her, but uh, obviously has not shown up yet, that we know of. Um, the blue tiefling, he unfortunately was taken in the attack, and the large Loxodon um, unfortunately died protecting people. Yeah, taking back a little bit, says I we need to apologise as much as the and had. Giving off certain degrees of ambition, knowing uh, the fact that he died saving civilian lives is a commendable thing. She raises her glass again before she takes a sight step. As for your tiefling friend, as much as my initial reaction might have said the contrary, I do believe that it was not all that bad. And she says it with a kind of sort of like bit of taste in her mouth kind of way. Is it so hopefully if there's any way we can help get her back, then I hope it's possible. And Cloud will stand and pass Elspeth to drink and pick up his own and just say um, a toast to those who are, we have lost and those that hopefully will return. In here. And as she goes with a third kind of like third step finishing glass, she goes, mm. one moment, please. And she goes out until other woman opens the door and goes back out of it for a sec. Comes back in and goes, There's someone here I think you might actually like to meet, uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, dear. And she gives us gestures and lets someone in the room. As a high elf lady comes in, and Alex, if you would like to take it away as to who they see. Um, well, as you can see from the characters, which is in descriptions, uh, basically, you see a your traditional looking blonde haired high elf, but the main difference is instead of the traditional like brown, blue, or green eyes. They have a slightly more orangey red. And they have the symbol of Pelor, the Dawn Father, on, well, their vestments that they are wearing, which are blue and gold. And, and although Scott said female, this character is actually a male. Are you saying your character is a lady? No. I considered that with one of the pictures simply because I like the art of it, but then I saw this one and I was like, yeah, I prefer that one better. And it is a male, at least I assume it's male because I can't see any defined chest. That's very sexist. Women can have flat chests. I well... know, but, but when it comes to artwork, they tend to make it very, very obvious whether it's male or I female. Know. I was joking. Well, elves are like quite. Tend to be kind of uh, feminine, anyway, so... oh, they kind of they, they've got that kind of like yeah, we can you know sometimes it's hard to tell anything yeah. going on with them. Oh, you can't see the character sheet. I did change London's character sheet to it, so yeah, we could never see London, so ah, uh... oh, that's just a GM. Hiding it from us. I'll fix that, don't worry. Oh, I'm building a separate character sheet. It's just the fact that I was thinking maybe this could last in our session at least. 
but he just kept going and going and going. <laughs> well, he's still technically sort of alive. London's definitely dead, so, you know. Oh, no, technically, uh, Visco's paced. After being barbecued and not quite dying, the, the dragon just went, oh, fuck this, and basically stomped, cub stomped him into the jail cell floor. Oh, that's fair enough, then. By the way, would Elspeth's eye that she's got around her neck have had any reaction when Visco finally kissed the dirt? Uh. With everything that was going on, you didn't initially take notice, but I'll say with, like, between plainer, timey-wimey nonsense, that you find out if you feel the conversation as this, as this new cleric entered the room, you just feel the kind of, like, slight, not like a buzz, but some sort of sensation from the eye, and then you just look there, it's dimmed. Plain old glass eye now. No, technically you're holy. Oh, no, technically okay. you're a holy symbol, but it's noticeably just like glass eye, just an ornament that you use for your holy symbol. If you know what I mean. Fancy oh. shine off to it. Elspeth is gonna tuck it under her clothes and take that note for later when she's not in a public setting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm Monsieur. Sunblessed, one of the clerics of Pelor from the city. Uh, I want to thank you all for the assistance you gave the citizen. Some of them praised you very highly. Fighting a dragon is quite a unique thing, especially when you're not one of the legends. It's a, it's a pleasure to be in your presence. And they can just go back to her seat and start filling up an hourglass. And she's like, "Says oh, don't be modest, dear. You've done a lot to assist citizens as well. There's quite a few people who would be dead if it wasn't for your efforts." I just patched up the ones I could. Pillow's light. We survived this. Hopefully, they don't come back. But dragons seem to have a habit of doing that lately. Well, they seemed less commanded by the dragons, more com dragons commanded by the gif, by the uh, riders. Yes, but this is an evening for joy and celebration, so let's not dwell on the dark. Let's mm, look to the light. I'm assuming from the description I was told, Lord, you must be Cloud, correct? That's what people call me. Oh, is it not your name? It's the name I chose and I was given. The air, correct? Um, is there? I know it's hard to pronounce for. Quite a few people, even elves, have trouble sometimes. My family was weird like that. Well, that's fair enough. So you're a healer? Yes, I'm blessed with the talents of healing light from the Dawn Father. I'm one of the few clerics who specialise in healing under his banner. Yeah. I've known a few clerics who don't quite heal too much, but it's nice to see one that does. Yes. Well, most of the clerics you'll find around Teldori tend to be more defensive based. One of the main legends is one of the main legends is a follower of Sermere, I believe, and she's a cloak of great strength and just 
Yes, Miss Trickfoot. We we met. She healed us. Did she take his name or? I can't actually remember. I don't know either. I don't think it was mentioned. Maybe we should tweet them and ask. (laughs) I'm pretty sure it's um, Scanlan Trickfoot now. I I would say more than likely knowing how Pike would be. Yeah, true. As you guys are discussing with this new arrival, uh, more guests return, including the two gentlemen that immediately can just like avert their gaze from Elspeth as soon as they walk in. It's ah, gentlemen, nice to see you both again. You're like, yes, Miranda, it's also good to see you with you. <laughs> like, and a few steps behind them is, of course, a familiar looking tiefling, which again, is like, as if it wasn't only bad seeing him again, both of them. And again, Salvador, lovely to see you. And she goes, like, there's that sort of like mock kiss thing on either side of the cheek. He's like, Miranda, my dear, you're lovely as ever. Good evening, all. And he just raises his eyebrows, he sees Elspeth from the corner. Good evening, Salvador. It's been a while. I'm guessing you're not here for my talents again, are you? <laughs> yes, those last couple of broken bones I received were very much held by your gracing hands, thank you. And his tail just kind of wags a little bit. Says, if only you'd put those uh, lovely hands to other uses. I've told you. Only when I know for sure that I can definitely cure whatever you tried to give me. At which point the two gentlemen in the other end of the room are again are trying to just like keep their mouth shut and it's like, mm-hmm, okay, this has got very awkward for us very quickly. Mm. I know everyone, whatever you do in your private bed chambers is none of our business. As Miranda looks around and goes, ah, oh, it's quite the lovely ensemble we've got here in spite of all that's happened in the last few, uh, few days. I um, do think you're taking a very delightful turn. Are these are, are there still people coming into the the place or is it like is everyone just inside and then just now coming out into the hallway and into- there's more people approaching I would say if you want to make a perception check to see who else is coming you're more than welcome um I I mean I'm not particularly looking for anyone I just want to kind of see yeah, just see, just, kind of uh, see if, you they're wearing. if you just look see who's coming in twelve twelve you just see a bunch of people just starting to kind of, uh, crowds of people getting dropped off in like uh, carriages. Some are just kind of hanging out outside. Some are actually going towards the house. You can't tell who's who. Um, the ones going towards the house, are they wearing anything particular? There is what looks like a cobalt reserve uh, kind of common uniform outfit. I don't know what the actual people in the reserve would wear in terms of like shawl, smocks, whatever the fuck they would wear. But there's definitely Sunday from the Cobalt Reserve approaching. Uh, I'll wear something similar, but without the actual, without actually looking like I'm wearing vestiges uh, of the Cobalt Reserve, and uh, I'll follow behind. And if if the guard asks me, I'll say I'm here with Elspeth. Uh, I'm looking like Lisbeth. As you start making your way, the guards initially question you, then you explain, they go, okay, we're expect- we were expecting you hours ago, but okay. And they let you by. As the rest of the party are sitting there, as you go, ah, oh, Dr. Hedro, how nice to see you, as a familiar uh, professor walks in. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And there's a few more brief moments where again then copy shows up. Joins proceedings. Again, welcome this like evening. Uh 
and a, an hour or so passes of just like small chit chat between all the other various guests and more people arrive. There's like certain merchants are uh, arrive, including a particular fire genasi who uh, comes in with like this over the top sort of like floral, what are they floral necklace things called again? Hawaiian's hand out. You know what ones I'm talking about? One of those things, but it's like over the top, like it's like several bouquets worth over him. Which is kind of weird because he's like on fire all the time. Yet not sitting in the place. He's like, oh, hello. And it's like, oh, oh hello, Jafar. And it's like, when it goes, evening all, evening all. There's like curtsy bows and all this kind of nonsense. Sorry, the crowd of people as they all start talking. It's like a who's who of Western society here. to the party wish to do. Um, I'm just kind of mingling, generally kind of staying away from the party, just kind of mingling with people with a drink in my hand, trying to be as sophisticated as possible. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, Cloud's probably doing the same thing, but um, keep um, probably doing his uh, old routine of listening in on, on everybody's conversation, picking up tidbits of interesting or anything of use he might hear. Okay. Perception check, please. Fifteen. You hear uh, the two gentlemen in the corner of the room mention Elspeth a couple of times. Nothing too much detail, but you get the feeling that they know her somehow. Out of character, have I mentioned that I hate you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for going to work in a high-end brothel and then coming to a high-end pie. To answer your question once or twice. <laughs> As he will um, go up to Elspeth. Oh, Elspeth is trying to keep her distance from the freaky elf. She's not had uh, good encounters with other elves. So she is deliberately trying to keep her distance. Excuse me, miss? Uh, uh, oh. Sorry. Um, noticing that Elspeth is just trying to keep her distance from him. He just apologises and moves on. Uh, Toto wants to kind of do the rounds looking for any kind of hot, older, rich ladies that he can chat up and possibly take. I was expecting you to go start walking around going, got space? Got any space? Got space? Oh, my God. He's just playing it smooth, just trying to stay suave. He's got the smoking jacket on. He's just looking for any hot, older ladies that might have a bit of money as well. I right, mentioned those crops give you like a minus five to charisma, but <laughs> <laughs> and the smoking jacket. He's looking for like the female equivalent of a sugar daddy, so like a honey mummy. <laughs> Is that actually what they're called? I'm gonna have to Google this now. I don't Do you know. know yeah, I assume... that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, make a make a perception check. See if you spot anyone in particular. Roll high, please, or roll low. You know, don't give me a mid-roll, give me something high or low. <laughs> it's a sugar mama. Oh, honey mummy's better. Honey mummy is better. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what alternatives Urban Dictionary has. Ah, oh, god damn it. Uh, you get someone who's the equivalent of, like, maybe uh, half-elf Joe Rivers. Joan Rivers. Kind of pinch your cheeks and go, hey there, sure it's deaf. 
a pearl necklace. Obviously, they know it's like very a lot of wealth, and she's got like a kind of like a one of those clip-on earpieces that's like goes on the top of the ear as opposed to the bottom. That's kind of made like gold with a couple of rubies kind of inset in it. So you go, okay, she's got money, but she looks like a wax figure of herself from like twenty years ago. That's melting. <laughs> Is she proper like mutton, like not just ugly but aged, not in a good way. All right, well, she's got some money, so Toto's going to start laying it on thick. Okay, roll me some uh, persuasion checks, please. I have a zero for persuasion, so... Yeah, if you're getting that 20 here, this would be beautiful. Done. You want, you want more? How many do you want? Right, hang on. Her response. Oh. <laughs> She's just going to give you a little cheeky wink and just kind of gestures upstairs. Five minutes. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> little fucker. <laughs> I'm going immedi- to immediately, as soon as she says it, I go and get Cloud. And I'm like, Cloud, Cloud. And I'm just like, she wants me upstairs in five minutes, but she might not be a ten out of ten. But she's got some money. I am not surprised. Just keep her happy, and he just pats her on the back. Sends them off. We do. Couple of minutes go by, she leaves the room, and then obviously Toto's like, I'm going in, slicks back, and heads out. Um, yep. Seeing the woman, is she like really old? or? Well, she's a half elf, so she, gets, she has a bit of an extended lifespan. So I would say, if, if I was comparing to human years, she looks like about 62. Yeah, Cloud will. Um... Maybe not aged well. I feel like I mean, like kind of like well, some people kind of like, oh, I'm surprised by your age. You're like, really? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bang on for what I was thinking. This is what you're gonna get the impression of. Yeah, Cloud will uh, pop upstairs first. Um, go into his bag and grab something, and then he will make sure he locks. Uh, if he can, if he, uh, I don't know, he'll probably close the door and probably put um like a tie or something on the door, like just to say it's occupied or something. Um, and go back downstairs and slip into Toto's pocket um the bottle of lube and say, "You might, <laughs> you might need this, my friend." I forgot you we had that. <laughs> I've been waiting to use that for so long. It was just like, where can I use this? And then I oh, just was like, yes, yes, here we go, perfect. Do me a favour. As you've you've done the door thing, all right. You've got the you've got the item in question. As you're passing total on the stairs, make a slight of hand check. Now you're a rogue, so this should be pe- this easy. Shut up, shut this. up. Don't don't jinx me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, champion. Just like. Subtle hand movement, and then as you do it, you slide it out your sleeve into his back pocket. Well, I'll just sort of slide it in his pocket and tap him on the arse and say, oh, have fun. And sort of like cringe a little bit at the thought. <laughs> See, this okay. is the party that I know. These, we're, back, we're back to how we were. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, Maka, you're still in the party room. Do you wish to do anything? Mingle with anyone? Speak to anyone? Do anything in particular? Mm. No, I don't want to do Thank you, Kevin. Just sitting there being like, Badass bitch in the corner of the room. Does a drink something can I will try to enjoy the the party maybe? I don't know. Cool. 
who is that? Everything, everyone could have done at least one thing in the party. Well, party doing things in the party. Uh, Elspeth, you doing anything in particular? Uh, she's. Is there a sort of window? You know how there's there's sometimes like a book nook in the window, and there's like a big flat surface you can sit on. Is there something like that in this room? Yes. Okay, so she's just kind of sat on there staring out the window, not really paying much attention to the party, just playing with her holy symbol. She's a, she's just not paying attention, to be honest. Once she's managed to get some distance from High Elf Man. At which point, a familiar face starts approaching with Having fun, my dear, it's Salvador just leans against the wall next to you, crossing his arms. Oh, yes, making fun. How are you? Your close calls with a Lobby's fan. Are all of your girls okay? All the girls and the boys are fine. So what brings you here? Well, I am a particular. Uh, I am one to keep my eyes and ears open to various opportunities that come up, as they do. And I often hear things in my line of work. Both things that are very useful to a woman of her, or like her. And he kind of just, with hand still holding his glass, kind of like one with finger gestures towards Miranda. You've made a very useful friend, as it, it seems. Yes, it's always good to have useful friends. You can have useful friends, and if you kind of then uh, avoids his, like, pointing for Amanda to the two. Still very awkward, but they can't, there's a thing keeping them here, they can't leave, so they're trying to just, like, yeah, we're still part of all this, but we're kind of, like, non-active combatants, really. Like, you remember those two, right? Oh, yes. Their family has very deep pockets, which I imagine you remember. Yes, I do. What do you say about making a pretty pe- uh, a pretty copper piece, a cute copper piece or two off them? You can use a sly wink. I'm... Not in the mood for funny business tonight, I'm afraid. Quickly business then? Just all make a couple uh silly silvers while we're at it. And again, he, he's like he's given the hint that like he's not trying to say go up and two for one again. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's more a case of it's like <coughs> there I know what happened because obviously I run the establishment but it's also kind of going they, they obviously don't want other people to know so how about we we'll start that with we'll it a little bit I really up to you I could I could do it myself but I think it's why not include you in the fun since you seem away elsewhere I will let you enjoy the fun tonight I am not one for burning bridges <laughs> Very well, I can give us a lot of respectful knowledge. I'll leave you to your uh, inner thoughts, as it would be. Thank you. And hopefully we'll speak soon. Of course. You seem kind of slyly maneuver your way through the crowd of people towards those two gentlemen. And again, the park atmosphere kind of continues on for a little bit, and it's all pleasant and pleasant. And every now and again, you all individually get gla- noticed glances off uh, Dr... Uh, Hedro, who is, you know, putting on a, a, a happy face until every now and again you can just kind of get this glance off her, which is just like, not pure hate, but just contempt. Is there um, music going on? I've been sitting here, well, I, I forgot to do something. Uh... Party music! Starting up. 
Sad, right. Big box, little box, cardboard. Big... <laughs> Everybody, clap your hands, clap, clap. <laughs> At which point you just hear a voice from going, your attention please, and you just turn around, everyone initially is like staring over him, and then he goes, oh wait, yeah, no. And it's, of course, Scanlan Shorthorn says, how about we make things interesting around here? At which point you see Pike kind of sitting in the corner now, uh, arriving, going, oh, Scanlan, really? It's like, oh, come on, it's a party! Why not? He pulls up a stone, stands on it, goes, How about we get to see who the best dancers in all of West John are here? And he starts clapping along the music. Come on, who wants to join me in the dance floor? Cloud um, goes over to Maka and puts his hand out and says, uh, May I have this dance? If both of you would like to make performance checks, please. Okay. Oh, okay, scoring in the mid twenties anyway, and a natural twenty. So you guys, you just that whole hand out. As soon as she takes her hand, you just like full on, just like, uh. I really should have looked up dancing stuff. Uh, went blank. So that's sort of typical sort of like medieval sort of like everyone's clapping. We do the Macarena. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? For natural twenty, you get Macarena. <laughs> Can't keep it set in the pulpit. He's like, fuck it, Macarena. <laughs> Although to be fair, I've done that in a rock club once, and it was very funny to watch everyone just kind of looking at you whilst people are moshing on one side. You guys are Macarena, you know. <laughs> It's very funny to do. But yeah, everyone's all like, and even Scanlan's kind of taking back by going, even for me, that's random as fuck. But yay, go on, you. And he's again clapping away. Anyone else? Um, I'll go up to Pike and go, um, Madame, may I have this dance? And looks at you with those, again, those like little monster doughy eyes. He goes, Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? And kind of just like hurries on the dance floor with you. So, performance, correct? Yes. I think Pike should just do it because she's got the gauntlets of ogre strength, so your character can just stand on her feet and she can just throw you around. I thought I was thinking. And Pike natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like, rather than small lady being led by a taller... You know, slender elf. It's more cases like she's almost swinging you around. Like, if you all remember the film The Mask, when uh, the mask spins someone around, uh, Cameron Diaz a little bit, like doing the whole sort of like ball thing, but she spins him that fast. Uh, he spins her that fast that she kind of like whirl uh, tornadoes. That's what's happening to your new elf friend right now, as Pike's just kind of like holding by the hand, just like, where? Just twirling around like crazy here. People kind of like, and as you like go, you kind of like stumble about back here and fall into one of the buffets, just like, oh, and the guy goes, and he pulls a little kind of parchment thing with a zero and goes, and they fail to dismount, blows a kiss to Pike. And he says, anyone else? Come on, come on, get off here. You know, I thought you were all, rich, you know, rich, fancy fuckers. Come on, this is perfect. Some of the more rich folk are kind of sitting in, and then Salvador looks at Miranda and goes, May I? And the two of them start to kind of like, mm, Maybe, yes, no, yeah, fuck it. And she puts the glass down. The two of them start to kind of this little like ballroom blitz kind of thing going on, and everyone's like, Ooh, fancy. And good half an hour, 45 minutes old of just everyone just getting up and taking turns dancing a night away, enjoying good food, good wine. Gets to the sort of late hours of the early hours of the next morning. People start to kind of like get tired and say we need to leave. And Pike and Scanlan then go and says, okay, we must depart, but it was nice meeting you all again. It was nice. And they kind of take particular notice with the party members that they recognize presence in. 
it was good bumping into you guys again and maybe on our like if we meet again a third time we'll actually get a chance to properly talk and such and they leave it is the last few people that are left are Miranda herself Salvador uh, after speaking to the two young gentlemen have been kind of well, secret secret talk for a while he then eventually takes his leave, bows to everyone, gives Elspeth a quick wink, and then leaves. Arriving quite late to the party and only staying for literally a case of I'm only popping my head in was Toto's brother, but once he's seen everyone having a good time and his brother in the mug's always like, oh, I'll come back another time, and kind of awkwardly kind of like, ah, bails out. It is now mostly just Miranda and Dr. Uh, Hedro who are left. And of course, party members who are still standing. Do me all a favour, folks. Constitution checks. Including for those me? who are drinking. I was about to say. Um, <coughs> I was sipping. I wasn't drinking too much. Clouds a little bit beyond the limit. Copy's fine. <laughs> Yeah, our high elf ends pulling a legless here and going, oh, my finger's getting tingly. I must have, uh, I must be getting affected while there's like several empty tankards next door. Maka's drinking like a champ. Toto, all you can hear is here is that, and that's not the bed springs. That's just... <laughs> After a while, she leaves with a bit of a pick of a grin on her face, with no pearl necklace, as people notice as she leaves. And you just see Toto come down at some point later in the evening, a little bit dishevelled, one of uh, one of the goldfishes floating upside down inside the cocks, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a pearl necklace. <laughs> Worth about five hundred gold pieces. So small little kind of tiny pearls, like the, the tiniest thing to consider a pearl, a big bunch of them on your necklace, it's 500 gold worth. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, everyone's all doing well. And Randall's starting to show signs of tiredness as she's talking to a very kind of mostly serious Dr. Hedro. Yes, come on, my dear. It's been a rough few days. We're all having a good time. Do you need to really kill the mood? And you see uh, the, do uh, the doctor starting to kind of like losing patience a lot of it. Says, it really is an urgent matter regarding the ship. Maybe we could talk more and negotiate regarding its release. At which point, Manda goes, another time. And you can see Dr. Hedro starting to kind of lose her temper a little bit. And there's a particular twitch developing in her eye the Miranda's kind of not noticing because she's kind of sitting there going I can feel the beginning of a hangover starting maybe people should leave you guys are still welcome in your rooms she's made that pretty clear but she's kind of like can we discuss this another time uh, doctor and she's tensions are starting to slowly build in the room um, Cloud um, being drunk he's going to um, go over and start uh, sort of just chatting to Miranda a bit, and flirting a bit more than, um, well, properly flirting now with her a bit. Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. She's amused by the idea, she kind of flicks her hair back and then just puts the, the, the uh, her pointing finger on your lap. She goes, shh, you've had a little bit too much today, because you get, and she just like pulls it when you whisk, uh, kind of like twirls when you whisk, because she goes, but good effort. And she's going to use your little kind of like tap in the ass as she walks by you. And right now, the doctor is sitting in the room. Pretty pissed, and all you can all hear in the back of your minds is that saucer's voice going, This is what you'd rather do with your time. Really? Well, At which point, 
obviously Miranda's not here, but she's like, you're all still welcome to stay in a couple nights if you wish, after all your efforts. Uh, she just slumps in the doorway, kind of going, but you'll have to forgive me if your hostess has to, uh, and she can almost falls and goes, <laughs> 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 has to go rest herself. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night, and she everyone. leaves the room. It's getting late then, and it would seem you have rooms here. Uh, I should probably be heading back to... Oh wait there, I forgot you did give me a room as well. But yes, um, I'm going to head up to my room now. Um, please, do enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and Doctor, when someone is that drunk, please do remember to... Take it slowly with them. It doesn't seem to get through as easily. Um, but I wish you all a good night, and um, I shall see you in the morning, hopefully. As my character leaves the room to go to bed. Well, as you leave, Doctor just kind of almost blanks you completely. And she's standing there, like, arms crossed. And very peeved off looking as the party are kind of in various states of partied out. Elspeth is just going to ignore the fucker and attempt to help Cloud, who's probably looking very drunk right now, to bed. His own bed. You can I take him uh, by the side and just uh, help him up the stairs. You had your side of the deal to sort. We'll deal with ours when yours is done. And he'll let Elizabeth take him stumbling up the stairs a bit. Uh, Toto's gonna kind of not quite as drunk as Cloud, I don't think. Or maybe more so. Yeah, not quite as drunk as Cloud, but drunkenly uh, put his arm out to Maka and just say, do you want me to walk you back? Oh, I think I will be perfectly safe in my room. You sure? Because I'm... Um, Pretty tough guy. <laughs> Thank you, but I will go alone. I'll see you in the morning. And then I'm just morning. gonna lie. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna lie on the floor and go to. I'm gonna take one look. <laughs> I'm gonna take one look at the stairs and just think, nah, nah. I'm just gotta sleep on the floor. Or sleep at the bottom of the stairs. Uh... Elspeth and Cloud, as you get to the top, uh, to the second floor landing, you just see Clover kind of just cur curled up with, this time, a potted plant. Just on the floor, or somewhere on Clover? It's like, as Clover's kind of sat in there, kind of, like, kind of like curled up, kind of way that kind of dogs would do, the, the potted plant's kind of just sitting next to them, in, in the middle, it's almost as if Clover's wrapped the tail around it. I will try and quietly creep past them so as not to disturb the sleeping animals. As you pass uh, the potted plants, kind of, uh, branches is kind of like tapping the side. It's like, as you pass, it's like, me, me. I'll pat it on its leaves. Hmm. And you see on the side of the the plant said, uh, the plant pot said, you just see that they kind of curled, uh, kind of wobbly. It went from like a purple uh, potted circle to like wobbly looking with like teeth popping through. And it's just like, then it turns into a weird grin. Aww. And then turns back into a potted plant. <laughs> I'm going to tuck Cloud into bed and cast Create Water and create him a big glass of water for when he wakes up. Uh, before that, Cloud. Um, mm, I want to just roll an intelligence check for. Of 
cool. I'm smart enough to know. I will, ch when she opens the bedroom, I will check the bedroom first to see if it was the one Toto was in. Yeah, you guys are sharing the room. Yep. Cloud sort of just grabs his bag and walks away and goes, not in there. Not in there. <laughs> uh, there was another spare room, wasn't there? Yeah, there was one that would have took a uh, copy and visca in terms of like extra numbers, so there's a spare room that's not been used. I'll tuck him into that one then. Just seeing a um, empty bottle of sticky liquid on the floor oh. in our old room and just going, no, 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 no. It's not just on the floor, there's some of it on the ceiling as well, just dripping. Yeah, Cloud just grabs his have a sack and like pulls off the cloak he put around it and wanders off. Yeah, there's probably like a full Toto shaped Vaseline stain. <laughs> That's fair enough because he probably would have used somebody else's cloak or something to put over his bag. That's why I yeah, marked my stream as mature audiences. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got my head right now is Scary Movie 1. Yep, me too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Stop <laughs> <in> the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> The naughty deltas are back, everybody. <laughs> oh, it could have been worse. It could have been Scary Movie 2 from Under the Bed. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that wouldn't have happened. Um, We've still got another 45 minutes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway. Actually, yeah, so Elspeth is going to tuck Cloud in and create him a big glass of water. Uh, with create water. Because that's definitely what that spell's for. Um, that's not funny. <laughs> it is. It is a little bit. <laughs> it is. Um, and she goes, I think you're going to have someone sharing your room. Do you have a preference while you're inebriated? Because I'm pretty sure Toto will be the only one sleeping in your old room. So you have me, Maka, or Coffee. Cloud sort of drunkenly hugs you and just falls down back onto the bed. Well, that's that decision made. I will cast message to Maka and go, uh, would you mind sharing a room with Coffee tonight? Uh, not Coffee, Elizabeth, that's what I meant. Sorry. Characters with names that aren't actually their names. No, I don't mind. She's welcome. Perfect. Thank you very much, my dear. By the way, did you let go when you fell backwards on the bed? Or have you pulled me onto the bed with you? He probably pulled you onto the bed with him, but by the time he hit the bed, he probably... Go. He probably just like passed out. Awesome. Oh, that was very hmm? Anyone else want to do a thing before we cut to the next day? Nah, I'm good. Everyone all good? Everyone all good? Yeah, all good. Yeah, all good. Yep. Oh, it is then the following morning. Uh, because I had a decent kind of nap before we even went to bed, um, I'm going to wake up slightly early than everyone else and leave the man. Okay, you leave the man house. Yeah, I'll leave my house. Any particular destination in mind? Uh, one of two. Well, both of them, actually. Uh, I'm going to go to, like, the smithing district. I, I think there's, like, a district where there's a lot of smiths and everything. And just kind of spend a bit of time observing them. And then 
uh, just have a wander around the temple district as well. Okay. Apparently, you just go for the literally wander about each district. Is there any particular purpose as to why you're wandering about looking for anything? Uh, well, I'm I'm basically just trying to pick up some of the skills, basically. So the, from the skipping district, I'm just trying to pick up like tinkering skills from there. And the temple district, because I'm a bit torn, so uh, just kind of thinking about my past and kind of trying to relive my memories because when I was a child, trying to trying to see whether whether clerical redemption is the way to, to go or whether it's a matter of just accepting the past and moving on from there. Yeah. Do me insight check because if you're just having a little in our monologue kind of thing, just as you're doing that, just unnatural twenty. You've had a bit of a interesting few days, and it's given you a bit of perspective and the actions you have taken, the actions that the group have taken, the general clusterfuck that's happened in general. And you feel oddly as if you've like, this is a massive hurdle and I've just like falling over it, but landed on my feet. So that's good. See how things go on from here and just, I would say that when you go to the smithing district, you kind of see someone leaving out a kind of like, not a, a manual, a proper book, but kind of like a kind of one of little soft-backed um, how to do things old style kind of help me books things and you can just there's extra copies lying about and you went ah you won't miss one and it will give you a plus one to any tinkering checks just because as for the temple district there are sections of it that are kind of just like okay don't go near here there's a lot of Still, people recovering in here. It's like when more of, more of them are made into like makeshift hospitals for people who were injured during the get the get Yankee attack, and there's various religious duties getting taken out. So they're like, maybe another time we'll try and help you, but right now we've got priorities. Cool. And then I'll go back to just kind of my rooftop, waiting for everyone to come. Your own little like spot carved out. Some I'm some dude just look up and the, up he's on his balcony and go, why is there like seriously brooding person up here every couple of days? He's behind you. There's like Batman. There's also someone else like going. You're in our spot. Uh, it's two gold pieces an hour. <laughs> anyway, uh, who's next to wake up and deal with the following day? I would assume Elsa, because she only really needs four hours of sleep, so I assume she's awake fairly early. And is just going to sit on the bed, doodling in her notebook, waiting for Cloud to wake up to see how fucking hungover he is, and laugh at him. Uh, speaking of which, Cloud, make me an R constitution save, since you rolled so low the last time. Oh, you think someone's just cast call, told the dead on you? You just hear every pin drop in that uh, manor house is just like an is echoing through your head right now. Just oh fuck! Just, 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 just five more minutes. Oh. Uh... Anything else, uh, Elspeth? Uh, I'll create him more water. I think at this point, if you actually just do what's in that gift, I think I'll probably help him more. Just like here. <laughs> Am I that cruel? No, yes. I'm not that cruel. No, she wouldn't do it. She'd just um, hand him a glass of water and go, believe me, it'll help. Cloud pretty much just like starts sipping on it and 
Um, turns to Elizabeth, probably holding his head with one hand drinking from the glass with the other, and just go, um, do you have, um, you, you have a way of, um, messaging someone long distance, do you? Not? Mm, no, not particularly long distance, only 120 feet. Um, I do not know the longer distance one, that was, uh, that was Victor. Oh, that's, uh, fair enough. Uh, I, if we are to believe what the, um, squid face said, we, um, Iman and here and Vasselheim are going to be attacked soon. So we, um, I want to try and get word to people I know who can get word to people who can hopefully do something about it or at least prepare. Maybe the, uh, maybe it's a spell cleric, so maybe the cleric that was in the par at the party last night would know it. Be able to use it. That is true, but if I remember correctly, you, you need to know the person, don't you? Or do you? I can't remember. I can't remember what happened. Uh, uh -oh. As you're talking, there's a loud crash noise from outside, and you can hear the kind of guards kind of like rushing to see what the hell happened there. They're already dealing with it, so you're like, these are still in your rooms as far as most of you think you are aware. You just hear the and they're kind of running off in the guards. That's about it. Uh, Toto, before we go any further, yep. uh, do me a favor. Roll me a con save. A con check, sorry. I'm sorry, you have AIDS. <laughs> you remember what you did last night and vomit. You're just sitting there going, that's one off the bucket list. <laughs> uh, Toto is very happy with himself. <laughs> he is very happy with himself. And you're sitting there like, with, with one finger just twirling about in the pearl necklace and going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Akka, is there anything you want to do uh, early doors? Nope. I think I'm gonna do just like a couple of stretches, like mm, that was a fun party last night. And again, everyone hears the the crashing noise. Well, everyone who's still present. Uh, Alex, do me a favor. Uh Roll me a perception check while you're at your own little place of residence. Well, I'll say for when you're up and about in the morning. You're right. You see this a weird gentleman with like kind of handlebar mustache, kind of weird, kind of pointed hat, couple of like recent scarring and scratches, and some nasty looking long swords and a long coat, kind of just uh, kicking about in the local neighborhood. People kind of like you know, sideway glances. But he's not really threatening as such. Just people just kind of look at him going, he looks dangerous and sidestep him. And you just see him as he walks by. He's, there's like two kids kind of bumping him by accident in a nearby alleyway. He's like giving him a bit of a cross look. Go, go, go piece each. He carries on his way. Recognize just vaguely from like certain iconography on his clothing that he's, uh, of course, a blood hunter of the. Insert name of the order here. I can't. I'm not going to look at the book right now because I can't be arsed. <laughs> uh, what do you do in the morning? Apart from obviously see that. Uh, right. Um, up. Uh, do a usual routine of washing, dressing, stretches, then checking little list of. 
see if I've got anybody who's requested for me to come give them treatment today. Nope. Think about what happened last night and figure. Yeah, I'm going to go check on her because she's probably hungover as hell and I might be able to help with that. So I will proceed to the mansion to meet the lady again and see if I can offer any help with what is sure to be a terrible hangover. And you start heading your way back. As the other party members here are crashed, they can see at the other end of the, the, other end of the about, uh, second floor, you see the main bed chambers open, you see Miranda hanging out with her like, house coat on, but she's got a rapier by her side just in case. And goes, did anyone else hear that? I heard it and felt it. Yes, but it looked mm. like the guards are on their way. It seems to be like raised voices, but mostly of like confusion and a little bit of like a little bit of anger, but mostly confusion coming from the main doorway. Mm. Do the party wish to intervene, or are they going to just step back and go, uh, breakfast first? Am I seeing this commotion coming out of... Uh, make a perception check, see if you can see clearly what's going on. You can hear it, but you're just like... Yep. It's a bit busy this morning, you're like, you can just hear noises and can't quite discern who's, who's who or what. Uh, Cloud will probably move to like sort of like the top of the stairs balcony section and sort of look down to see if he can see anything. The, the two uh, main house guards, a couple of extra ones surrounding folk outside, and what you see are five large green skin fellas. Oh fuck. You blew the horn. <laughs> I didn't think they'd follow us here. Bloody hell. I blew the horn back uh where did I blow the horn? Blew the horn Come just on. before you re entered the city, I yes, think. You when you were dealing with the Get Yankee ship. Yeah, I was hoping to find them there. Damn little bastard followed us. Hunted us down. There they are. Oh it's by the way. I sort of Stumble down the stairs and go. Well, 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 well. There's a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. See the guards gonna go oh, back, back away, sir. These things are dangerous. You're just no, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, the, the, That's um, quite enough uh, trouble with these. Lo long tooth. Devices. Long tooth. Long tooth. At which point you just hear what? See one of them is a hand go. I'm long tooth. Ah. Hi, cat guy. Long tooth. Good. Uh, you're all right. Good, good, good. Yeah, they. I know them. Um, outside. No, uh, no breaking anything. Oh my. At this point, the guards are looking in the absolute like shock horror, going, "You know these beasts?" Uh, there's always a time you need to make your muscle. And well, if you know orcs, you know they're bloody strong as well. Uh, make a persu uh, persuasion check. Is that a disadvantage or? Uh, nah, just go for. I think you're feeling it enough. Uh, yeah, the guards kind of go. If they break anything and she finds out, y'all are gonna get put on pikes, and they kind of step back and go, "We're taking no part of it." No problem. You five. Outside. And Cloud follows them out. Outside, okay. Oh, uh, okay. You called us. We got a little yeah. held up back because uh, West no like Orc. That's fair enough. I was after the whole attack and everything. I wanted to make sure you guys were all right. 
and you just hear uh, you just hear uh, Gregory kind of go, huh, huh, us, all right, and one of them kind of pulls out like a look at the shiny, shiny, pulls out like a silver, uh, one of the Gith Yankee swords, non silver, but look at the shiny, shiny, ha ha, ha ha, you can start to you know, like mockingly dances with it, and it's like small because he's like big, muscly orc, he's like, I got the thing, ha. Ah. <laughs> Long to just kind of face panning, going, stop doing that, Gregory, for fuck's sake. Uh, oh, that's you true. Can do four of them. Five. All oh, right, because I was like, if there are four, we lost one. Oh, all five are here. Cool. Uh, Cloud sort of says, um, okay, hold on a second. Uh, Wait here a moment, and uh, Clara will go back inside, and he will grab the Giff Yankee Great Sword he still had with him. Sort of all silver t- one, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, take it down and um, hand it to them and say, "One of you probably use this uh, better than me." I just kind of look at if like. Sure, you want to hand that over to us? Don't you want it? They all think very hard about it and go, well, yeah, but we didn't earn it. This is... can't just give a shit, you know, as much as we might, like, you know, different when things are in the thick of it, we use certain things and you just hear, like, uh, clobber getting surprisingly eloquent in the whole sort of like, yeah, orcs don't do that kind of thing. Uh, if you're going to give us something with really, really cool weaponry, you think we need to kind of like, we need to feel like we've earned it. Otherwise, we need to beat you up and take it. That's one of the two. Uh, so, much as we appreciate the gesture, and uh, at that point, long to excuse him a slap in the back and he goes, all right, enough, you talk too much to shit, shit you know. Fair enough. That's your choice. Um, just wanted to make sure you guys are alright. Um, and pretty much, um, I can't remember. It's been a long night. Well, you want us to go deal with anyone? Uh, Crush is kind of just doing the thing with cracking his knuckles. Um, Cloud side. One more moment, and he'll go in and see if he can find um like a bit of parchment and some ink and to write a note. Yeah, there's a ink well nearby, and you can. Um, he will write down a little note. Um, fold it up, take it out, and say, and put it into Longtooth's hand, and say, um, take this, and he will. Basically direct them to the west gate and out and to Eddie's farm and say, be good, behave, and hand this to the dragonborn lady there. Okay? Oh, can I confuse for a moment? And long Tooth just takes it. She will, um, she'll understand. It will be a place for you to stay a bit safer without anybody trying to kill you. You can help her. Be nice. She's my sister, and she will kick your ass. And when I, if she needs any help, you help her out. And maybe you can teach some of the uh, boys how to fight a bit better. Okay. Oh, look at one off. I kind of confused for a second, and then kind of it just dawns on me like, okay. And we will probably need your help in a day or two's time, so I will call you when we need when we're ready to go. We'll be killing some more of those ugly looking fuckers. At that point Ben Clatter goes like going, Yeah, more of them yellow skin mother and as he goes to say something, something falls out of his backpack, kinda of like it, like a ripped seam at the bottom and it falls, it's like a, it actually looks like a symbol. And as it has to go and just goes, that's always like a symbol drops and just like clash. 
all the fucking pain running through your ears right now as you're still hungover to fucking just have this thing just smack to the ground. Uh, and you just go slowly reach you down and goes, surely cat boss. And puts it back in his bag and kind of does the scene back up. Directions. That way. Just gonna, go, go. You just kind of point in the direction. He's like, go. Fuck off. You've, you've got your world does now. Go. Just there. Uh, and they kind of just, they all just do the sort of like, blow the horn thing. You're like, when you need us. And they all just head off. And the guards are just looking at you going, what the actual fuck was all that about? Like genuine sort of like, perplexion. Is the expression they have in the face of like, what? Hey, not... Stop judging everything by what they look like. Not all orcs are bad. And, well, we kicked their ass and now they're sort of under our command, sort of. But, you know, it's always handed out. We've had that before. Yeah. yeah, that was a bit of a messy thing. Anyway, yeah, if you're going to go back and say, Cat, dude, you look like you could... Use a bit more of the water or a uh, good bit of breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Heard chefs working and stuff. Go, go. Just make sure you don't, yeah, you, you find the proper box to shit in or whatever, and they can kind of just close the door behind you as you come in back in. He just gets like the middle finger held up over his shoulder towards them when he hears shitting in the box. It's like dick. You walk back in inform the others of what all that was about or do you just keep that to yourself for now cloud beelines it for breakfast he knows a good breakfast solves all hangovers as clouds running in you just hear everyone hears the sort of like ling ling as a little handbell goes and he goes breakfast is served uh, all day like... just oh, opposite side of the study Rebecca, you said something there? I was say, before going down, I'd like to try and spot where the dog and the Nunic are. Uh, Cover's uh, actually at the bottom of the stairs, just looking Toto's face. He's still kind of kicking about downstairs. Bottom of the steps is like, oh. yeah, it's just twirling the, the pills. He's going, yeah, yeah, as he's sitting there. Eyes still shut, whilst getting licked by the 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 the, the wolf. <laughs> oh, Edith, Edith. Ah, uh, takes me back. I do not want to know where those pearls have been. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not normally the one that comes away with the pearl necklace, but. I can't last night as a six. Oh, she was going to say something so mean, but I can't. Say it. She was going to say it's the reason they all get pearl necklaces because you finish too quick to actually get inside of them. Maybe. I would appreciate it if you kept that to yourself. That's for Tom. At one point, there's a guard awkwardly trying to keep his mouth shut. And then suddenly lets it with, Well, I would have thought the only burns you'd have got would have been the friction from just how dry things were, but hey ho. And then just kind of just walks out as if, like, I'm off duty now. <laughs> Puts his cloak to the side and just goes, like, walks out of the house. <laughs> when he says that, I look at Elspeth and I say, Little does he know I still had that bottle of. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, like, <laughs> like he's the idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's the. It's like he's, he was just like he's been dying to say stuff because he noticed you walking up earlier, like uh, the night before, obviously been on duty. It's just like I really want to say something to that little dwarf, but uh, half point bastard. But uh, took his chance and he's like, I'm out. Don't care. And he's way out. But yeah, breakfast is served up for all those who wish to partake. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need some breakfast. Yeah, I'll 
And we'll see you using this about, you know, most of the way through it when, obviously, Miranda's at the head of the table, little Keyleth joins her, sits on her lap and starts, like, eating some stuff alongside her. And the guards let in uh, our new cleric friend, Copy, if she wishes to join everybody again. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll join up with everyone. And... With a very kind of like forceful uh, ma'am, you can maybe wait until after that. No, this is too important to wait. And again, Dr. Hedro walks in. See, like, takes one kind of like stunned look at you all and kind of goes like, Morning. With a mouth half sort of still at eating, just like, meh. Um, she's kind of trying not try to hide the look of absolute disgust on her face and be like uh, and she goes look doctor you're, you were lovely company and all but could you maybe just tone it down a little bit she's like I told you this is too wanting to wit and you can see the signs of frustration starting to build up and the kind of disguise still things starting to flicker a little bit I need to look at have a look at the ship. It's very important. <coughs> yes, um, mm, Miranda, uh, Miss Killard. Um, we spoke to the professor yesterday a little bit, and she has some ideas for how to hopefully get the ship to fly um, on its uh, under our own control. Um, so hopefully, if you can let her um, at it, we can hopefully get the idea on how to uh, use the leftover parts as well. At which point, whatever utensils you had in the hand just drops in one hand and our drink in the other, which is like flavoured water, just kind of just spills and... Uh, Goes to go, I'll go and get the wipes. And she kind of goes away and gets a towel. And Miranda just looks at you, like, stunned, sober, looking, going, you honestly think you can do that? The doctor just kind of leans forward and goes, I know I can. I just need your permission to. And she went, and Miranda just kind of goes like, pulls out her steel thing, goes, take that, go to where the ship is, tell them I told you to have full access, and, uh, and she looks at the party and goes, you guys apparently are involved in this little pet project too? Mm, I did tell you yesterday morning, didn't I? I have a few ideas. And at that point, there's kind of like a weird sort of surprise and gleeful look on around this face. She goes, excellent. Well... Have fun with that, and she gets off, uh, and she kind of springs up a little bit and staggers a little bit because she was like, vertigo, oh, oh, yep, yeah, still hungover, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Uh. Uh, Cloud will sort of like hold up a hand and just go, um, obviously, you are. Both of these being in the state of hangover that you, and hungover that you are, please make me a deck save. As you try to stabilize her, still drunk yourself a little bit, just a little bit. Gomez and Morticia thing, she goes to fall over and you just kind of just like zip up and go, ah, got you. And give her a cheeky little wink. And she's just going to do that sort of like, uh, drunken giggles thing and she kind of throws the hair back and goes, <laughs> oh, what's new, pussy cat? And she's going to stand up and goes, thank you. Puts her up and um, just goes, uh, obviously as the professor works on the functional one to get it working under our power, if you can... I assume you already have, but if you can have your uh, people collect the parts of any um, damaged or destroyed ones, any useful parts can hopefully come into use to possibly make maybe another one or two, if there's enough parts. And she just kind of turns around and goes, normally that kind of request would raise a lot of eyebrows, but with you guys, I'm beginning to think there's a lot more to it than that. And she goes, but I'll see to that. You go help the good doctor, and she can just like, now shoo shoo, 
I'll clear off down and she kind of runs off into the room and says like, don't worry about the spell, when they get uh, the house uh, servants will do that. You go, are you sure mommy I want to help out? Is the last thing you see it before the door shuts. The doctor just looks back, sits in the chair and goes, <sighs> That was fortunate. And you see on the table there's like claw marks where her hands were. All you had to do was relax. If you were coming to Miranda, you could have just said beforehand. Not to get all worked up and think that we were pretty much useless. As useless as just being little soldiers to be sent out to do your bidding. There's nothing. You just look to you like, like very cross. He's just like chewing on bacon. Like stuff in his face now. Miranda's gone. He's just literally just scoot shoveling food in now. That's it. Well, now that we have access to the ship, and she pulls out of her satchel this weird looking uh, attachment thing that she's got. It's a good thing no one's around. And then she looks at the bottom of it, there's like a kind of to be quite blunt, it looks like a small, like a collection of small, like animal brains inside, the, like a kind of, uh, like a stomach sack attached to like a weird headset. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Is Alex's character in the room? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Attach this to the ship, and it can do most of the piloting. For you. Feeling that I can be the pilot, however, it's probably best not to have me in the pilot seat. I can be far more useful elsewhere. And as she's finishing speaking, she turns over and notices that there's an extra member of the ta uh, person at the table and kind of goes, You again? Yes, it's quite interesting what happens when you just let people speak. At which point, she kind of gives a bit a uh, very alarmed look at everyone else at the table. Oh, okay. uh, this is a problem. That's the kind of gingerly walk around the table. It's only a problem if you mean to bring harm to the citizens. If you're planning to protect them, or my guess is using that ship for something like a rescue, you know, then I'm not going to sell you out. In fact, I'm happy to help if you're planning to rescue the six that were taken. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh my. As she puts the weird kind of biomechanical traption thing back in her satchel. That's walking towards your new cleric friend with what looks like vicious intent. Cloud sort of grabs his breakfast and slides to the other end of the table. Okay, anyone else want to say or do anything here? I'm just gonna hold off and wait and see what she does. I'll I'll lean towards Elspeth and say, and um, who is this other person? Uh, Miranda introduced us to him last night. He's a cleric of Paylor, I believe you said. Yes. I'm whispering that you wouldn't have heard it. What do you think? Do we need him? Uh, 
I don't know. I will leave that one up to the rest of the party. I might be slightly biased in more than one way. As Dr. Hedro starts to kind of walk with intent towards our new cleric friend, gets to a certain point and then starts to, as if she's got us on the head twitch. It's as if she's listening to something, but you can't hear anything in the room. Your offer to help genuine. Cool. It means I'm real cl uncomfortably close going, and don't lie to me. I'm not lying. I'm just bad with people. Especially... That doesn't surprise me, you are an elf. Yes. Although not raised with elves, I come from a temple of Pelot. So that she kind of recoils back a little bit and goes, we'll see. And we'll call that for tonight. All right. I will turn the stream off for two seconds.